Roll the intro. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet and make noise for grass and leaves. Let's go. When the club go around here, I'm a cat. This bang, bang, gang. I don't owe you bang, jack. Bang. When I'm in the ring, it's just me and my best friends. OC cutting no slack. Hollywood men, you can put me on the A-list. Crush Unleashed, better put it on your playlist. Me and my fam be ballin' like the Bruce. Fight night, baby, hard hitting like Shane. Family first, yes, yeah, bloodline business. We winning all the gold. Look at how they witness. I was taught to be the greatest. A thousand days of running. Check out the book again. Cooling with the baddies in the baddie section. Guarantee you they ain't jaded. You know you baby face. I ain't feeling your gimmick. The fans think it's overrated. Pride last never on the beast. Sleep flex and repeat. Whole new swag with a price on the tag. Coming live from the west to the east. Better recognize on the mouthpiece. See the power level gotta increase. Bringing content on the daily. Feeling like pressure unleashed. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, non binary pals, baby mamas, baby daddies, and everybody in between. Welcome back to the Gresham Lease Podcast. This is episode 59. 59 of this podcast. Joining you as always is the voice that does the most, the purveyor of mischief, Gresh. And joining me as always is none other than my main man, my right hand man, my partner, in them, Mr. Holly. Real. Excuse the big fro, you know. You got to do what you got to do. What's up with your partner? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Yeah, y'all excuse the big old puffy fro on the day, man. We're getting the hurt done tomorrow. You feel me? So, uh, you know, had to breathe it a little bit. You feel me? You had to breathe it a little bit. So, you know, we we here. We I'm going to be what's... there eventually because I got these locks. So, you know, I got, Come on, I, got, now. I, got the, I got the tools. I'm surprised they stay in, in tech. I've had them for about a week. They usually fall out of place. Hey, I see you got the side to side. You got the Jimmy Uso's going on today, mm-hmm. huh? Oh yeah, my, my, my stuff gonna be long, long that that Jimmy. Uh, ooh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I might mess around, mess around, and get that tomorrow. I don't know, dog. I don't know. You, you get the tool on to the side, just walking right, right. To the side, you're like, yeah, you know, know, let's go, let's go. <laughs> you know I mean? But you know, for the, for those of you who don't know, hey, this is the Gresham Lee's podcast. We 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 typically talk about everything that is professional wrestling but for today we're going to be mainly talking our bread and butter can roman reigns finally trust the, really the rock the rock in th- this new version of heel hollywood corporate rock can he trust him like we're going to be asking that question we're going to be talking about that here on today's uh episode of the gresham Lee's podcast which is titled rock hard because he threw up the 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 guns signaling that he's a part of the the uh the gun club <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, but yo man, we appreciate you guys always rocking it with your with, with, with your boys, your bros, the fam. Last week, y'all really rocked with us for three hours. That was crazy. I don't get it. How did y'all stay with us? But yo, shout out to Rufus Lala, Cam with the Susio Boys podcast. Like, yo, they showed showed up and showed out. That was a fun time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed every episode of the Gresham Lee's podcast, which you can Download by visiting www.gressionleash.com or simply going to wherever you get your podcast. Uh, speaking of news, we got before we get into today's show, we have make sure you guys keep up and check out our previous uh, episodes of the podcast from the talking ish side of things. Uh, make sure you guys check out the one I did with Sloan Susio Boys podcast last week. Fun time. It was literally like two uncles rocking it and having a good time just chopping it up we were just literally making jokes and this is the best conversations i feel like the talking ish is basically the best conversations because there's no script it's just me chopping it up with, with the boys with the bros that's literally it like we just here having a good time having having a blast and speaking of having a blast this coming friday we got another one dropping and he's and it's with my my main man, my right hand, my you know how the highlight is my right hand man. This man is my backbone in the content creation. He 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 helps me and guides me. He's none other than my main man, Derek Myers Jr. Of hey, hey, so he's gonna dude. be with us. He's gonna be rocking with us on this Friday, 10 15 a.m. not Let's p.m. Go. a.m. Eastern Standard Time, wherever you listen to your podcast, as well as right here on YouTube.com slash Gresh Unleashed Pod. So make sure you guys check that out. We literally talk Uh-oh. about everything, complacency in, in media, everybody getting lazy, 
losing sight of the art. That is a great conversation that I hope you guys really, really check out and go out of your way to check out. It's literally two brothers, two light-skinned brothers in the <laughs> in the podcast and media game, just chopping it up, having a good time, having a blast. But hey. yo, make sure you guys check that out. He is the uh he's pretty much the bridge that got that linked me and my boy highlight together he pretty much me and him me and him came up together in the media he saw me coming from a little kid in the media game and mm-hmm. now i'm right where i am so i wouldn't like without his without help from him i wouldn't be where i am today so make sure you guys show up and show out for that podcast and as far as for you for you people who are are support of the main youtube channel another video of yours just dropped today and that is the final what if for the uh Tribal Chief versus Past Trilogy, WWE 2K23, the second to last video that I'm going to be doing using that game. But, yo, it is what if or what if this is how Roman Reigns gets dethroned at WrestleMania. I use, I, to give you a sneak peek, I use Cody Rhodes, The Rock, basically current Rock. I use a nice little tribute. Like, I have a little cameo here and there. Pretty much lets you know that at the end of the day, this is a video game. But I see the way that this a, a version of this game or the way that I booked this go down in real life. That's pretty much like a like how what if they do what if they do this? So make sure you guys mm-hmm. check that out over on youtube.com slash at itsgresh today or whenever you want to listen to it. But yeah, it's, hey. a lot of content is dropping. It's dropping. Shout out to my boy. I, hey man, I got I gotta tell you, talking ish, man. You know, I had I had a chance to catch up on some episodes. I've been watching it, uh been listening, I should say, uh while I was on the road over the weekend, man. And mm-hmm. You know, uh, shout out to all the previous guests from like Low, you know what I'm saying, Jay Muji, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you know, you do you was doing your thing, brother, and it was great listening to those uh stories and everything. But all due respect to every previous guest, I ain't gonna lie, it's gonna be my favorite. It's gonna be my favorite. Well, oh, DJ, you know, DJ, man. You know what I'm yeah. it's, it's a family affair, you know what I'm saying? It's a family you know, affair. That's, some that's little favoritism. That's you know. the thing about the podcast. It's like this is a whole family affair. Like this is literally uh-huh. just like like we don't do drama. This is this is all about fun. And shout out to Ciendo, uh over mm-hmm. with uh I literally just wrapped up before NXT her show for uh what's I believe what's what's what I I, I forgot the exact name. It's a lot to talk, but we, we basically review and preview, give you heads up of what happened in NXT. So make sure you guys check that out. She is a sweetheart in this in this community, especially in the community full of vultures. So you, you have to you have to weed out the, the the negativity. But she is someone you really really check out. She may be in the chat. She may not be. She probably fell asleep because I know she got a she got work uh, across town where she lives. But Definitely check out uh it was it that wrestling girls uh that res- those wrestling girls yeah check out check out her uh check out their channel that's where that's where I was live at with with her great conversation talking about NXT live it was a fun experience make sure you guys check that out wherever you listen to your podcast let's go uh, speaking of this podcast we no longer have football to talk about. <laughs> but we are we're definitely gonna be chiming it up with the fam. Did you peep uh All Star Weekend? I did not, and I am so glad I didn't, apparently, based <laughs> off what I heard, man. Bro, based off what I heard. Oh that my was so goodness. boring, man. That was the most boring. <sighs> I only heard there was one thing worth that entire weekend, and that was Steph Curry versus old girl from the WNBA. No, Sabrina. Yes, and and that was it. I, aside from that, I heard it was straight straight cheeks. It was boring. Like if they if they don't do nothing to change, I don't I don't see myself watching next year. I, I have a proposal for it. Um, I mean, let's, a lot of people. About it. <laughs> so well, yeah, I guess we can put that in place of uh, you know what I'm saying. We, we can yeah, put that in place of it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so you know what? Honestly, man, shout out to my sports fans out there. But honestly, the all-Star Games kind of been trashed for some years. I was talking to one of my coworkers on Friday, uh, yesterday, actually, and he was talking about the difference between, like, today's era versus, like, back in the day of, like, the Jordan era and even the Kobe era, right? Like, mm-hmm. those All-Star Games were more fun to watch because they were actually competitive. They took it seriously. But for some reason, today's stars don't seem to take it seriously. You they're know playing like it's a video game. Yeah, right. And it's a vacation to them, right? So it's like mm-hmm. they're not going to go hard like they were for, say, playoff season. So here's my thing. I say 
why don't they really, for real, for real, incorporate the women from the WNBA mm-hmm. into the All Star game, right? And you could do it one of two ways. You could do it similar to what you did with Steph Curry and Sabrina, and make it a, a, a men versus women, or mix up some of the women on the east side and some of the women on the west side with some of the men from the east and the west and make it like a competitive you know women versus women men versus men intergender style kind of uh matchup but i know for a fact them women gonna play hungry and competitively where they gonna make the men step it up and actually play for real you know what i'm saying and then i mean because hey women ain't gonna play around bro they gonna take it for real for real and i know if women come down the court hitting them shots, oh, them men gonna be like, oh, no, nah, I can't let her. Nah, I ain't gonna let y'all do me. Uh-uh. <laughs> Let's go. You know what I'm Let's saying? Let's be competitive with it. Let's have some fun Let's with it. Like, fun. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, when I was watching, I'm like, bro, these dunks, the like the dunk contest. My gripe with the dunks, because I'm like, bro, you are doing dunks that I literally see people do on the regular. Bro. <laughs> Can I tell you, like, the last real good dunk contest we ever had was 2016, and those yes. names were not lying. Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine <laughs> was the last real yes. good. We need that back, bro. My and, God. Like, the only, the only people... Uh, I, Stephen A. Smith said this like two or three years ago, and I, I still stand by it. They need to stop playing and have these NBA players just sponsor them street style and one dunkers, mm-hmm. okay? And 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 dog on it. Let them first place get like a million, second place get five hundred thou, and, and third place get like a hundred thou. And bro, watch how serious them dunkers off the street take this dunk contest and get more creative, bro. They're going to be doing stuff we ain't never seen. Like, niggas ain't jumping off of cars no more, bro. Remember when Blake Griffin, at least, people tried to clown him like, oh, he, he jumped over the hood. At least he jumped over a car. Something. Like, you, this man, who, who who jumped over Kai Sinet? Oh, that was, uh, that was Jalen Brown, straight out the Celtics. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> he got drugged all, bro, all weekend they were driving You You boy. jumped over a five foot three and a dream size man. Sitting down, too. Sitting down. <laughs> so he wasn't even five three sitting down. He was, what, half of that? So he was, what, uh, what's half? Of, so he was, what, 2.5 sitting down? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I was supposed to be impressed. <laughs> Bro, they their creativity has got to step up, bro. Like, if you You're can't lazy. do nothing, get get with these street dunkers, bro. I'm telling you, sponsor them, let them compete for first, second, and third with a cash prize, and watch how much more entertaining that that dunk contest is going forward. We will get that Zach Levine, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying Aaron Gordon level dunk contest we miss. You know what I mean? And and Penny were blaming, you know, if y'all blaming LeBron James, by the way. I don't blame you for that because he did kind of set this up because ever since, if you think about it, superstars used to Kobe, Dwight Howard, uh, uh, even Nate Robinson, who wasn't necessarily a superstar, but at least because of how short he was, he became one and you knew who mm-hmm. he was going forward. There mm-hmm. were so many names, dude, that used to actually compete in this thing. And everybody wanted LeBron so bad. I'm talking about like 2003 to 2009 LeBron. With the way he would tease people in those pregames and just do crazy dunks, he like, please get in the dunk contest, and he'd never do it. <laughs> and ever since, not one superstar has done the same thing. Literally, it's been no names. Every year, I'm like, who? Who are you? I ain't never seen you or heard of you. Who are you? Bro. I literally almost got dragged up and down the timeline when I was like, I have no idea who none of these people are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that says a lot about Jalen Brown, man. Like, I know DJ going to get on you about that one. Oh, he no, like, he did. He did. He, on, he, on, the, on the podcast that we dropped, that's dropping Friday, he was like, bro, you know who Jalen Brown is. I said, oh, yeah. My bad. But at the time, I was like, who, who is this nigga? Yeah, who, yeah, Who is bro. this? And it's more so, it's not because I don't know who it is. It's more so, it's just like, you're not doing anything to help me remember you you're not standing out you're not you're not giving me a name like a kobe or a lebron or a steph curry or uh a james harden you're not giving me anything memorable you're yeah. literally you're just there you're you are. and you know to be fair i will say the last 
Uh, the, shout out to everybody who's like a fan of the Greek freak. Uh, I will say there was a year when he entered the dunk contest, but it was before people actually knew who he was. So mm. sometimes there was evidence that that dunk contest kind of made stars out of people like DeMar DeRozan, um, the Greek freak and some other people who entered and it became a thing. But for whatever reason, it has not made a star out of anyone that we didn't know coming into the contest. And it seems like bless Jalen Brown's heart. But from what I saw and heard online, <laughs> yeah. I heard, matter of fact, I put it to you this way though. I heard the celebrity all-star game was more entertaining than any of what we got from oh, the main was. all-star game. It was. <laughs> And that's saying something, because the mm-hmm. the funny thing that I got out of it is uh, Ruby Rose told Kai, Kai Sinet to score 60 points, and the nigga only scored four. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I swear, I, I didn't even know who the heck that dude was until, like, maybe a few months ago. And I'm you're, like, you're not alone. I don't I don't follow a lot of people on, on like, that's why, and people be thinking I'm joking when I say, if we are in the same field, mm-hmm. content creation, streaming, I'm not watching you. It's mm-hmm. not, that's the truth. I don't watch you unless you're family. Mm-hmm. And even then, to an extent, I'll probably put your, your your shit on on loop just to give you some revenue. Thanks. Come on. But as far as like actually consuming your content, not to understand, I'm probably not going. I'm probably not. I'm probably not going to watch it. And yeah, it's not. Bro. It's not no. It's not no dig in nobody. It's just because I don't want to. Like I say, I always say, I don't want to subconsciously steal your ideas. No, facts. And it's smart to do. Like when we're in this space, I've noticed we have to do that because you don't want to be like, dang, why didn't I think about that? Right. Mm-hmm. And be like, dang, why didn't I think about that for my followers and this and that? So it's, you know, and it's the same way with me as a as an artist. It's the same case. Like if I don't listen to you, that doesn't mean that I'm not supporting you. That's meaning like, yo, I got to make sure that when I'm making my own original music, I'm not biting or copying your flow or, or mm-hmm. the kind of, you know, what you're talking about. So I have to monitor that, but that doesn't mean I won't put you on in the car or like you said, put it, leave it on loop on the Spotify or something so that you get in your place. You know what yeah. I mean? So bro, it, it, it is a lot of people it. don't get, a lot of people don't get that. So it's like, I didn't, I didn't know who Kai Sinan is until I see him trending on Twitter about saying <laughs> something stupid. Exactly, and that's, like, that's the only like, time I see people. I'm like, bro, oh, you said something stupid. Oh, you encouraged yeah. something stupid. Oh, okay. Like mm-hmm. a few, like I seen a few clips. Like he had Nicki Minaj on his on his joint, mm-hmm. and she and she called him. He, she asked him, "Are you slow?" <laughs> so it's stuff like that that I'm like, oh, I didn't, but I'm not, but I know I'm not his audience, or I'm not mm-hmm. interested in his content. That don't mean I'm not I'm not going to act like I don't know who he is. So, but yeah, he, outside of that, yeah, the celebrity was better, and then. The actual All Star game that was on Sunday was just none but glorified stat padding. Yeah, man, that's that's and and I hate hearing that, man. Uh, that's literally what I got. I was like, bro, it went from I was so bored. I put 2011 to 186 <laughs> instead of 211 to 186. I was just like, <laughs> my bad, I got the wrong, the numbers wrong. Oh, bro, like I really hate hearing that though, for real, man, because it's just one of those things you're like, like the crowd really was not even move when they was making those good shots too. They were just like, oh, okay. And you you know that's that's another thing my coworker was talking about because he he's he's literally from that older generation of uh you know like with the Michael Jordan era and all of that right and even mm-hmm. like I said to some degree the Kobe era and the thing about it is like he was saying it's crazy how just when you look over the years it's like man back then you were he's like man these dudes don't even try to play defense and those tickets weren't cheap for fans. So he's like, if you're a kid, like a little kid, and you're at that all-star game, you're excited because you're seeing your favorite players. But when you're a grown, whether you're a teenager or not, maybe not even teenager, let's just say young adult Mm -hmm. to actual grown adult, and you're there and you pay $15,000 or $1,500 for a ticket to this thing. Exactly, exactly. But you paid that. And you go to this game and that's all you get. Like, and it's not even effort. It's just, oh, look, hey, look what I can do. I can just pull up from half court and nobody's going to guard it. Like, you don't want to go pay that much to see that. Mm, I, when I can just watch it on TV for free. Exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. Because I ain't gonna lie to you. Can. It was literally after like five minutes into the game, it became background noise. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's partially why I've been a little checked out. Sports has had me checked out this entire year so far, you know, from, from football with my Titans to my Grizzlies, you know, dealing with injuries this year. So I couldn't really tune in. I told DJ that earlier today. I was like, yeah, I kind of been checked out. But playoff season will be here after the next few months. So once playoff season get here, I'll, 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 I'll tune in heavily. You know what I'm saying? But, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. I know who's up top, yeah. and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, yeah. We not we pay attention. We just don't watch it. Yeah. like like y'all do. Like we're not we're not. I'm not gonna be bored out of my mind on every <laughs> Sunday. Like, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's 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 that kind of year. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, we in our we're in our playoffs of pro wrestling right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like by the time Mania ends, I'll be fully into basketball again. I, I'll be there. Oh yeah. Point, you know, yeah, we good. We good. And speaking of mania, that's a nice little segue to go into our main bread and butter is can the can Roman Reigns fully trust heel rock? Did you peep did you peep that promo on SmackDown? I did, and I had a chance to rewatch it actually just yesterday to try to let it marinate. And, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't just me. I know you because I remember you texting me that night when it was live, and that was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, much like anyone else, the moment this man came out in this Versace vest, you know what I'm saying, blending Hollywood rock with 90s rock and these. Okay, first and foremost, some of y'all praise this just a little too much in terms of the appearance. Yes, I give them creativity in terms of, you know, digging into the bag a little bit. But here's the thing. One, rock, all due respect. It don't look right without the hair of my guy. It don't. <laughs> Not for me. I'm sorry. I need the sideburns. I need the hair. I don't know if you can get it back. I don't know, but bro. Oh no, nah, his hat. You saw his headline. His headline. His headline is further back than than segregation. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Well, well, then it's, it's maybe he should have just went all 100 Hollywood or just created a new persona because uh, that version of the Rock is long gone. Listen, I'm probably gonna say something so controversial, but I'm. Come on, Gress. This nothing changed about this rock if you are okay and this is this is no dig on anybody i enjoyed this promo for what it was mm-hmm. but it did not advance any story for me agreed agreed that was my only gripe going to say. i'm like okay yeah you did the finally you insulted the crowd uh the, the, the finally your life has meaning you said you're gonna slap the herpes off somebody's lips you uh you pretty much insulted the Utah Jazz and all that stuff. You mentioned Michael Jordan and all that stuff. And then I'm like, okay, so where are we going with the story? Yeah, we got the whole dick and the shebang, Hill, Hollywood slash corporate rock, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then the one time, the one story that he did progress with, he it didn't make sense to me a little bit, but I had to let it sit to see, okay, he's a delusional heel. But when he was like, Cody, what was the story? You you lost last year at WrestleMania and you should have moved on. And I'm like, I'm not the biggest Cody fan, but I had to sit through an entire year of this man playing side missions. Mm-hmm. He moved on. He didn't bitch. He didn't moan. He went, he fought Brock. Rock with a B. He brought he fought Rock with a B over the this past summer. Mm-hmm. Then he, then after that he went into basically a tag team with Jay Uso mm-hmm. after getting him over on Raw. Mm-hmm. Then they teased Rock and Roman. I mean Rock and Cody for I mean no Roman and Cody for a bit. And then mm-hmm. he went back to Raw, lost the tag team titles. Then he went on, moved on to Shinsuke Nakamura into this year, and he won the Royal Rumble where. Newsflash, Rock, when you win the Royal Rumble, you choose a title. Mm-hmm. He chose Ro- Roman after reneging, and then they basically, WWE basically overcomplicated it for yeah. no reason. I, I, you know what? I, I, I agree, bro, because uh, 
I was listening to Busted Open just because it's always cool listening to some of the veteran insights from a, a Bully Ray or, you know, a Mark Henry and them. And so they described it as a uh, – it's funny because even with some of these um, – content creators they're actually bashing the rock but in not in a mean way in a way where they're like you can tell he's out of touch like uh like yo like they were saying for one no you know he has no opponent technically speaking at the moment officially yet now we know what they're trying to set up but he has no opponent at wrestlemania um you have not been a heel since literally your Hollywood heel persona. And look how far back that was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and on top of that, it ain't Hollywood, man. So you on live TV, my guy. Like, this ain't no cut. Say your lines over these. So you I ain't gonna lie to you. That entire promo, he was just rambling. Yeah, he was. And, and the thing about it is, it's like he hasn't and I, I believe I heard this on Busted Open as well, but you, you know, heard it last week too. Last, yeah, it was. Well, it's like he has not evolved at all. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't evolved with reading today's crowd. Like you're mentioning Trailer Park Trash, bro. Like nobody says that much anymore. Rock. All due respect, my guy. Nobody talks about fat shaming anymore, bro. That's we are accepting all sizes matter. That was '90s. You know what I'm saying? Like. Those type of things, like rock, respectfully, we, the ones that loved you and still love you, don't get it twisted, we are grown now, okay? We're grown men and women now, all right? So the rock that I can go back and look at when he was young, that's still funny because you were in your prime, and even with me being older, now you're it trying to toe the line time. of you're trying to toe the line of not getting canceled because you're a pro image. So it's like you can only go so far. Yeah, and it's like Rock, you you can. They're saying give them time. You know, they're they're, they're giving them time. We're not dismissing it. We're just giving you our thoughts on what we just saw. For sure, yeah. I'm I'm going off of some of what I heard through uh, what I was listening while formulating my own thoughts, of course, and it's like. Let's give him time. Let's see where he, if he can catch it, because it has been a while for him. We'll say it like that. It has been a while. You know, mm-hmm. normally it would just be a an occasional pop. And like they said, I mean, this is different. Like he earned the occasion, the the true pop that you're gonna always get when you randomly show up. But to be right. there consistently, and even if that's, that, even if he is there consistently, because yeah. we don't know. Well, he's at least technically part time. We, we, I guess, we'll know for this week because you know, obviously, it's taped. yeah. Since it's taped, we know he'll likely be there this week. Um, so we'll have to see where this goes, man. But um, yeah, Rock, you you gotta. I mean, shout out to Sir Wilkins. I know he's like a super duper big Rock fan, and he's like over fanboying it out but i'm like yo man and, nah, and that's, that's where that's, my that's my, that's pretty much where my my point is going it's like if you are going into this just for the nostalgia mm-hmm. yo you were having a blast like bk shout out bk jackson he mm-hmm. hit me up he was like bro the rock bro i got goosebumps i'm like congrats <laughs> <laughs> and that was my initial reaction because it's like i'm not it's like i was looking at it for from a advancing the story point of view Mm-hmm. And when in the little time that they did advance the story, he did not make a lick of sense at all, man. And but from a nostalgia point of view, he made sense because it's like, bro, this is just a rock having fun, trying to get, trying to feel the Utah crowd to see if he still got it. And mm-hmm. it's like, wh- okay, once he shakes the cobwebs off, I'm pretty sure he'll he'll get it because he's 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 no slouch. He don't he he know what what. He, he 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 hears he hears the feedback. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely does, man. And and I'm sure he'll pick it up. I mean, one thing he's always been good at, and we we peeped that uh is that, you know, and I heard this also on Busted Open, like when they were breaking it down. He's always been good at catching things on the fly, right? And being an audible type of person. The fact that he knew at the press conference automatically the way the crowd reacted, like if you looked at his facial expression, as Bully Ray pointed out, like at first, it was that badass, I'm coming out, mf looks, you know, bumps, shoulder bumps, uh, 
Seth Rollins and keeps it moving. But the moment he got those boos, that draw line dropped. That draw that jaw line dropped as in, wait, how dare you boo the rock? Wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. And as he catches it and he sees it, I mean, he's been in the business a long time. So he knows, hey, they're not really feeling this. Okay, bet. Now I'm going to turn this into my thing and I'm going to make them win me over. Hollywood Rock was a, a baby face. Remember, he organically had the crowd turning on him back then when Brock beat him for the title or Rock would have be beat him for the title. What happened? Crowd was booing it, booing him during the match. And he's supposed to be the baby face. But yet they cheered when he lost that title. And oh, you know, went Rocky away for a bit. Die, Rocky died, yep. and all that stuff. Yeah. Came came back and, and Hollywood Rock was born, right? Um, even before then, um, if you go back to like die, Rocky die, you know, he being the good guy who smiled all the time as Rocky Mayavia, he, he didn't want to he didn't he wasn't used to that. But then when he developed this rock persona, he was like, Okay, bet. So when he figures this out in this 50-year-old version in a way that Ages with today's. <laughs> that me, you brought up his age. That brought me. That reminded me when he first walked out. My reaction was, "Bro, you'll be fifty-two in May. Why are you wearing this?" <laughs> exactly. I'm like, bro, you'll be fifty-two in May. Why? Why are we wearing this? That's, that, was just, that was my first reaction. But then it's like you said, like I had to watch it back more than once. And yeah. I, as I as I digested, I'm like, okay, you can tell this wasn't the reaction he was he was looking for. And they're mm-hmm. improvising. And and speaking of which, since we're talking basically story, the main thing about all of this was really watching the body language of the bloodline as all of this was going down. And as we're about to get into, it's really more so just thinking, well, okay, Roman knew that he was going to be saying catchphrases, and he said, hey, listen, as my cousin comes out, he's going to do his thing. You know how that goes, but this is a big moment. Don't mess it up. You know, X, Y, Z. We're going to officially welcome him into the bloodline. Meanwhile, now Solo, who's never happy, is always in the same facial expression. Well, Solo, expect it. But Jimmy wasn't being goofy. Paul Heyman was maybe doing a chuckle or two, and Roman was kind of just standing there as Roman does. But it makes you wonder. When you smell what the bloodline is cooking, hmm, it wasn't a weed of ones. It was just throwing up a one. Yet you say to yourself, okay, well, could this mean my theory is coming true? Could this be a situation like, uh, dare I say, the world's worst WrestleMania, as they say, in WrestleMania um, in Atlanta. <coughs> you know, <clears throat> we still need a do-over. Yep. Um, when The Rock, uh, you know, kind of played the enforcer route and uh, kind of cost John Cena his uh, championship to win back against The Miz, and then The Miz gets the win, and then, uh, you know, it set up that year-long build-up for their mm-hmm. match. Mm-hmm. Could we be getting this? At Mania. I've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, when Roman finally loses that title, I've heard people, even before this all kind of fell into place, I remember listening to theories in the past about people saying, hey, what if, you know, everybody talks about double agents, and they're talking about, like, what if Roman gets turned on? Everybody said it would be solo. But now it's like, hmm, what if the elders sent the rock? Mm. Cody did say something about he told he spoke to a nice set of wise counsel, mm-hmm. including one that knew him very well. Who was not to say that maybe this was the ploy all along? Maybe whatever he whispered to Cody in that moment was to let him know, "Hey, I got you, brother. This is a this is all a part of the plan." He's a Ooh. long gamer. Yeah, yeah. You know, who knows? I get the strangest feeling. It, it seems like we're going to get this tag match. That's what it looks like they want to build to. But where? At Mania 2? It seems still, like They're it. still advertising Seth to defend the title at Mania. I th- given that well, this is the beauty of two nights, I guess. Thank God it's two nights. Because uh, I don't know how you... In the old formula of WrestleMania, I don't know how you would have did all of this. Because there's no way. 
I mean, you did do it with Daniel Bryan. I know how they did that, you know, him and Triple H. That he first. started off the night and then yeah, he closed and then, yeah. the night. But see, like, if that had been a two-night WrestleMania like what we got, y'all know that would have been a night one situation where it would have main evented and he would have beat Triple H going into night two, then he would have been in the main event if they had it back then. So now that they have this two-night format that they've had since the pandemic, it's more like, okay, well, yeah, you could do that tag match on night one, have it main event, and then, dare I say, it'd be a situation where I could almost say... Or we can go the route that I said, like I predicted in that What If video. I basically said, have the advertised Seth Rollins versus his challenger, Mm -hmm. but have it where the bloodline takes out the challenger before the match, set up Seth Rollins to get jumped out for night one. Mm -hmm. Still have the advertised Cody versus Roman match with The Rock pretty much in the corner to make sure that the odds are stacked against Cody. And then towards the end, have pretty much everybody who was screwed over by the bloodline pretty much even the odds. Jey Uso, uh, Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, maybe Cody. I mean, not Cody. Maybe Kevin. Kevin Owens, maybe. If you just want to add some little razzle. Like, have everybody who was screwed over except for Drew McIntyre come and even the odds. Yeah. Yeah, that would... And then, uh... and then, and then also during the match, have it to where Roman st- start. I mean, Cody, Rock starts teasing where he wants to take control away from, from Roman. Like, yeah. every time Solo tr- someone tries to get in- interfere on Roman's behalf, he says, stop. You listen to me because I'm the high chief. Yeah, that that high chief part specifically is going. They to need to. They need that. to specify high chief if they if they if that's the route they're going to go. They like Rock is Roman is the tribal chief, but Rock is one of the high chiefs, the elders. You know, I wouldn't mind them actually putting that in his title actually somehow too, like uh, you know, like on screen in his persona right now. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the Rock we should get. No Hollywood, no corporate, and, that, and I think that's no pretty much kid. where I was. Where I was at, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, we got the Hollywood thing, but it's like long term. I don't want that. Yeah, let's <laughs> I need get a high chief. Get a high chief rock because it fits more for this story. We need high chief rock. All right, he can come off and start off like a heel, but it really turns out he's actually getting in high chief mode. Especially mm-hmm. since it's real life, since he's really a high chief, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and and I think that comes to where, you, like you say, Rock feels out of touch mm-hmm. because it's like, yeah, for nostalgia purposes, cool. You could still do the the Hollywood Rock get stick, mm-hmm. but evolve it a little bit. Include like, okay, now that that's out the way, like have him backstage be like, okay, now that that's out the way. You know I'm a high chief. Mm-hmm. I've been watching you, and I get what you're saying. This man disrespected our family. Like have him establish that he's a high chief mm-hmm. in character. Mm-hmm. Now I agree, man. Um, you know the only thing about Attitude Era wrestlers is that they've shown so far they're not evolving that well. Like they were good for the time they were, but in, if the more they get into modern era. It's just a walking nostalgia act because uh, exhibit A would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I love me some Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what did you get truly when it came to him and Kevin Owens a couple years ago at Mania? What? You you got exactly what you thought you were going to get. Austin and Jorts in a T-shirt. Whooping ass, doing what he does. That's what I'm saying, I'm and that's what I mean. It's like if it's strictly for nostalgia purposes, mm-hmm. they're doing all the right things. Mm-hmm. But to evolve the story, there's a million ways you can go with this. Mm-hmm. You can have Rock still do his whole finally, and then accept that he's like, you know what? The Rock accepts his position as the high chief, and tap off of that. Mm-hmm. And have him basically because let's be let's keep it a stack. When you see Rock next to Roman, Roman immediately looks like little brother. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean he and he's the undisputed champion. Straight up quiet. I mean, just he's like 
he's like what we said last week when he was like where he's like Seth <laughs> basically mm-hmm. is to him. You know, you my just little brother that. Seth. Now you little brother Roman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and you just expect it. And everybody else is kind of in their corner doing what they do, including this cheese and that. <laughs> We're gonna get into that later. We're gonna get in him, yeah, when we get to the raw side. Yeah, but yeah, it's like Anything else you want to add? Because I feel like we said everything there is to say. It's like I need them to do more. Yeah, that's man. my only takeaway from can Rock can Rock really can Roman Reigns really trust the, the Rock? I hope so, man. Um, well, no, actually, I don't hope so. I I, I want to see who's ahead of who in terms mm-hmm. of like who's. But I, I need them to. I need them to add death mm-hmm. to it. Don't just have him come out there and do the same stick. Finally, mm-hmm. Ooh, Rock. I'm like, all right. You can literally have him just. You can just replay. You can honestly, and if if you're gonna have Rock come out here and do the whole finally thing and with no evolution, you can literally replay that promo from SmackDown in Utah and just not have him show up. Mm-hmm. Or do the satellite thing that he did because I mean mm-hmm. we, we you know we saw how that, that barely worked against John Cena, man. It, it, it you know. They, it did, it did, because he had moments where it was like, okay, okay, you still got it, but at the same time, it, you, when I say barely, it barely got or once, you. Or once John Cena exposed the the thing written on the wrist, I'm like, oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. As soon as he exposed that he was still writing notes on his on his wrist, I'm like, oh, it's a wrap. That's it. We're done. <laughs> yeah, you're done. So hopefully they evolve with this, and if they don't. Just spare me and just show me highlights of Rock's greatest hits and call it a day. And I'll see you at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how they do SmackDown as well as Elimination Chamber and see if like they do any type of story evolution with this. But uh, can Roman Reigns trust The Rock? I hope not. But also, can, Ro- can The Rock evolve? Hopefully. I, I, I truly hope so. Uh, also, that that happened through the, during this week. Uh, did you see that O'Shea clip that everybody's been talking about online? Man, I did, brother. I did. I was actually watching. I got to finish the interview because I was watching the interview, and then I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to listen because a lot of times video versions, um, I don't watch them the way I used to. I'd rather listen to it. So a lot of times I was like, I'm going to finish the interview in audio form. But I did see the clip online. And I was like, bro, this is why I've always been a fan of yours and your dad. But that was your dad talking right now, boy. I said, you. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, here's a clip of O'Shea Jackson. Is it Jackson? Jackson, yes. O'Shea Jackson Jr., uh, the son of Ice Cube, having some thoughts about, uh, I guess you could say, AEW. If I'm watching someone on AEW and I ask who is this guy I don't need you to tell me I'm not a real wrestling fan to tell me how could you not know such and such who did uh who gives a damn like I I need you all right inform me bro or at least have your programming in a way to let people know why you should love this dude, why you should fuck with this guy. That's something that I feel like is missing. When you, Conan, when I was on his podcast, he brought up, when you watch UFC and they give you a little backstory about this dude, backstory about that dude, uh, what this guy's had to go through, what he's done and vice versa. And then they put him in the room and they cuss each other out. And then by watching those videos, you've, picked a side yes. of who you're with that's missing from that what what they have is this 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 niche group of people who watch all of these wrestling shows and they're already in the know so when they see these names together it is a dream match for them but you're trying to sell this to american television baby you got to movie that up a little bit you got to give me some some cinema to follow you know some something to hold on to besides the announced team Uh, running down a list for me while this dude's walking down the ramp and i feel like that's missing and when you are trying to get involved and 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 trying to to really give something a chance and when you question it even a little bit Mm. and you get 80 no-faced accounts 
uh, coming at you. At, at any given time, you're like, man, fuck this noise, bro. Like, I'm, I'm cool off of it. If y'all like it, I don't. And I don't want that. You know, I have people over there that are that I'm cool with. You know, man. So no much lies detected. None. No lies detected. No. I mean, bro, it's it's like. I love this man literally in, in terms of what he's thinking. That's a true wrestling fan. And I respect him for saying that, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing about it is it's like, dog, okay. The no face thing for me in general, because you show, we, we get on that. Oh boy. The it's so many trolls. You no faced individuals are the worst. Like the worst. And that was the living example of what he, he just called y'all out 100%. In the most polite way of doing it too, because he oh, could have uh, you, you already know how they reacted. <laughs> oh, of course, of course, of course they reacted, you, and they're, they're gonna try to talk about them now and, and try to clip it and quote it, and it's like you already proven the point if you did that. And the first things first, I would say go out of your way to listen to the interview if you actually mm -hmm. want to see exactly what he's talking about. But if you don't want to listen to, then that's your prerogative. But for those who actually want to hear his point of view, check out the Chris Blanvleet because he's been. This interviewer has been all over the place, especially mm -hmm. after what happened on Sunday. That was also the talk of the town that we're not going to talk about on this show because I'm not. Like I said, we already gave our thoughts about this individual three episodes ago. If you want our opinions on that, look on the pre-show of that. If you don't, don't worry about it. But like I said, we're not going to talk about it on here. But I'm just saying, like, it got it was the talk of the town, man. It was the talk of the town, and it's like. What he's saying makes sense. Mm -hmm. like, like, don't get me wrong. AEW tried that. They tried to, they tried to appease to the casual, but they didn't. They didn't get it right. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. The entire MJF storyline was mm -hmm. a, was trying to appease to the casuals, but that storyline sucked. <laughs> After a while, when Adam Cole got injured, the yeah. entire storyline went off hill. It did. And it started, and it's you can tell that that story, that particular storyline was dedicated to the casuals. And I'm like, and I showed clips of this to someone who I who I know don't watch AEW. They was like, "What is this shit?" Yeah, man. Um, so they're trying, but at the same time, I feel like and I'm gonna get your opinion in just a second. But I'm like, I feel like if AEW take what he said as far as like, okay, digest into your video packages. Mm -hmm. Like, give me a reason to give a shit about, say, a home, a commander, or uh, who, who's new around here, uh, a queen Aminata. Give me, like, have her sit down, and I think they do that too. Like, they do it. Like, if you watch Rampage, they do it. Like, I watched her on Rampage. They actually had her sitting down and explaining why you should care. So they do it. They just don't do it on a bigger scale. <laughs> Yeah, I would say for Queen Aminata, um, they actually did with with Renee. They had a sit down, and I remember seeing the whole thing of uh, it was it was a really touching interview that made me care about her on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. The problem is you can't put something like that out and then expect me to still be invested if you got her losing. Like after an interview like that, with you how emotional it got. You gotta start pushing her now, bro. Like, I mean, she yeah, she had. A, I, I can give them credit. They did have her win on Rampage uh, against Anna J. But let's keep it a stack. Don't that many people watch Rampage? That doesn't do Anna J. any favors either. Um, talk about a star that fell, uh, man. Seriously, man, because it, it, she's another one that just got super lost in the shuffle. Because like. Yeah, you know, that's a different conversation for another time. But at the end of the day, man, like he's right, bro. You got to make us care, and that's part of my major grab with, with AEW. Why half the time I'm just like, I'll just watch the clips because I'm like, you know, to expect people to watch. Remember how stuff used to revolve around be elite, mm -hmm. be elite. Mm -hmm. you, ain't, you ain't relying on that no more. And so now it's like, okay, well, shoot, you had people who did kind of watch it, and then there's people who didn't watch it. And so if you didn't watch it, now it's not there anymore at all. So it's like, well, where are these translating to? Like you said, no one watches Rampage. So you're not going to watch Rampage. Collision, eh, hit and miss some weeks. Mm -hmm. Dynamite, 
hit or miss some weeks. Hit or miss some weeks. So that's every wrestling show. Like all of this stuff ain't perfect, mm -hmm. but it's like, and that's what I, I feel like a lot of hardcore wrestling fans or hardcore AEW fans need to understand. They're not immune to criticism. WWE yeah. is not immune to criticism. Some people, if you criticize AEW, bruh, they be pitched for it's like, well, you're not really a you're not a real wrestling fan. You don't watch. I'm like, dog, what are you talking about? <laughs> Man, I'd be like, you know what? So what he said it makes sense. But seeing as he's pretty much known as a pro WWE on to some of these people online, they go, they're quick to dismiss it. But it's like, bro, if you actually take your tribalistic mentality out of it and actually listen to what he had to say, it makes sense. And he made it very known that he's very cool with a lot of people over there. So there's not a reason for him to not watch. But again, much like any other person, if you are, let's say, a pro MLW person, okay, mm -hmm. all you watch is MLW. And you start trying to branch over and let's say you watch a DPW. Well, you're going to want to know, okay, well, who's this person? Who's, who's a person? Jay Malachi? Who is a Chris Danger? A Danger? Right. Who is right. uh, a workhorseman? Who is this, that, and third? You're going to exactly. hit like, who? who is this? Who's, yeah, and, it's, exactly. and it's like, if you are a genuine wrestling fan, you're going to be like, well, here, check this out. You're going to you're gonna have the link on, on Pat. Like, I, and I love it. I love it when they be like, yo, Google's free. So you don't know as much as you claim to know, do you? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Pretty because much. Because if you know as much as you come off as, you will be able to tell me right off the roof. Oh, this is Jay Malachi. This dude, former DPW World's Heavyweight Champion, from multi, from a uh, he he won the Continental the, the Classic that that made him the number one contender. You should check mm -hmm. out this link, this link, this link. Go to DeadlockProWrestling.com. Mm -hmm. Give or me DPW on demand. Like you get them links in, in off the dome. Mm -hmm. When someone to ask you what it is, you don't be like, "Well, Google's free; you can Google them." Yeah, it's like give as he again mentioned, like you have to sell me. Give me a backstory on the person, legit. As what you is what you can tell me about their character. What makes them over? And what and is a move? When I looked at that, when I looked at that short clip, it it told it told me everything that a lot of people didn't listen to the whole clip mm -hmm. because when he said faceless accounts, he immediately shifted his focus to the company itself. He said, mm -hmm. I can't rely on your fans, but for you as a company to sell me on why I should give a shit about CMLL mm -hmm. or why I should give a shit, a shit about an a, a invasion angle that you're doing with CML, CMLL, mm -hmm. why, should, why should me as a consumer care about this, about uh, uh, Mystico or um, Blackpool Combat Club going against some such, such and such and such, such? Yeah, that's true, bro, because the thing about it is, say what you will about WWE, but at least they'll find ways to make us care about uh now whatever I'm not gonna say all the time like sometimes they used to didn't do that well, no, no. Yeah, well that was a different regime bro we we, we yeah, already now, know that. now triple h is finding a reason to make a regular episode of raw feel like a big deal yeah 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 you know like in the previous regime we already knew like it was just like we had to figure it out for ourselves or mm -hmm. make our own theories but like we know that with the current regime we have um even from seeing the bits and pieces of it before it went roller coaster for a minute to now mm -hmm. being what it is, we started seeing the seeds of like, okay, you're giving me a reason like to care about a Johnny Gargano. You're mm -hmm. giving me a reason to, you're reminding me of, oh yeah, I forgot that this person was this good. I forgot Shayna Baszler could do this. I forgot that this was, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and bringing backstory into, oh, yeah, you know, this person was was this in NXT. They were dominating the scene and this and that. Oh, yeah, they were. Let me go back and watch that. I remember that, and that's going to make me care about this person again for a second. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, those little details, man, and, and AEW doesn't give enough of that at times, and it is a bit or if they do, they give, but they put it on the wrong channel. Yeah. On the wrong show. Yeah. Cause I ain't gonna lie to you. Everybody not finna stay up at, at 10 p.m. and watch Rampage. Everybody not finna. Everybody not finna go out. Everybody not finna stay in the house and watch Collision every Saturday. At all, man. And and that's the sad, part. especially when you know it's already on the same day of a of a pay per view. <laughs> and you're like, now why would I watch this? And you know, good and well, Elimination Chamber's on. Well, luckily, like, sure. this, luckily this week is on in the morning, but still. 
Like lucky for them, yeah. <laughs> lucky for them. You know what I'm saying? They're lucky for that. They get lucky. They, I'm sure they love when WWE goes overseas and knowing like, oh, okay, it's a time shift. We're good. But when it's in the States, you wanna you want me to watch collision the same exact time and flip back and forth? I think not. not I will happen. watch that on a Sunday. Yeah, no, that, that ain't happening, homie. So it's like, nah, bro. And then uh what was I gonna say for that before it uh I kind of lost that train of thought, but it's it's all good, you know. Come back, but yeah, bro, they gotta. We we you know, O'Shea just put it really well. And if you got a problem with that, then a you're not listening to the full thing in detail. You should watch that again. Or B, you just, you just don't, don't want you just don't want to. You just don't want to hear. It. And and like I saw a lot of reaction, right message, wrong message. I'm like, what the fuck does that even matter? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, bro. It doesn't it, it, so right message wrong message. So you don't want the message from somebody who grew up in the business, mm-hmm. who understands film and media, mm-hmm. who understands Stevie. Like, oh, he wasn't good in this movie, so we should ignore him. His bank account don't say that. It's like, bro, I will listen, and I'm gonna keep it a stack. I will listen to O'Shea, Ice Cube, and all these people before I listen to someone who hides behind a Roman Reigns avatar or mm-hmm. uh John Moxley avatar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, what was, was that th- on Twitter the other day? Uh, the Soul Ruka avatar. Oh, well he, well, he was like, uh, you can't, sp- you, but you you can't spell WrestleMania without. E- there's no T in WrestleMania. Yeah, trying to correct Bianca's EST and be like, there's no T, and we're like, bro, sound it out, brother. My point exactly. Like <laughs> Skip Bayless used to say this very wisely, and I need you people to understand this, even in the wrestling world, as what we do. Don't hit send. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, the moment you do that, you are you are you sure you want to put that? Don't hit send. And then what crash me up? They'd be like, it's satire. He's joking. No, I don't think so. He's really stupid. He's he let me know. <laughs> it's like there's no there's no coming back from that, bro. So yeah, man. Uh shout out to again, like you said, Chris Van Vliet, uh killing it on the interview scene. Uh I'll say for being like a true fan and just letting you know what it is from a Hollywood perspective and in general as a wrestling fan, because AEW does cater a lot to non-American more than anything, as you noticed. It's like Japanese and of course lucha culture and with a sprinkle of American, but not really. Mm-hmm. So yeah, B- bottom line is uh we just gotta honestly yeah, honestly just really just take criticism where you can mm-hmm. and actually listen. It's okay to disagree, but don't just be so quick to dismiss it. Oh, because it's the right message, it's the right message, wrong message. What kind of shit is that? Yeah. Oh, and and oh say, hey, if you ever come across this in some kind of way, just holla at your boys. Because we have no problem explaining that to you in a civilized way that mm-hmm. doesn't turn you off from the product or wanting to watch it. Okay. Like we will happily tell you. If you like, if oh. you end up in Philly and we all in Philly at the same time and you want you stumble across us, we're gonna have we're gonna have a we're gonna have a conversation. Mm-hmm. We won't even have to have cameras. We literally just have a face to face conversation. Mm-hmm. That's how I am. I tell people all the time, like I'm a I'm I, if you if you come with the with the piece. I'll give you the same energy back. But if you come with the BS, I'm just gonna walk away from you because I'm having fun. Wrestling is fun to me. This ain't this ain't no this ain't my nine to five. This is a hobby. Come on, man. I don't Tell need I, I I don't need I, like a lot of people need wrestling to survive in content. I don't. This Ditto. is fun. This is, fun. this is just fun. And if I'm not having fun, I'm not watching. Come on now. And I'm not, and I'm not doing it anymore. I will literally move on and not be, not be moved. I'll be like, "Well, guys, this is done," <laughs> and I'll be done with that. Uh, but yo, before we uh, get up out, before we move on to this week in wrestling, we're gonna take a brief break, catch water, catch our, our throats, and uh, just like we did last week, we got another edit for you. Uh, this one is a classic. It may be new to some of y'all, it may be old to some of y'all, but hey, it's still a good one. We'll be right back. Uh, make sure you uh, don't go anywhere. Peep this uh, next edit slash highlight freestyle. Check it out. You think it's that easy? Yeah. 
Yeah. Highlight. Don't forget the real. Hey. I don't know why I'm left in the tank. Yeah. Coming straight on the mic like Tyson, Jackson, or Jordan, I'm bad. The living poster child of this game, I'm a regular ad. Walking like I talking with these infinite rhymes. You writing checks that your mouth can't cash, but I get on time. New inductee to the Hall of Pain. Look at how we came in the gym, getting all them games. Put that boy to shame. Pick the scenario, I tell him just how it could be. Put that boy to sleep so much faster than Tyron Woodley. <laughs> Ask him about me, I bet they don't doubt me. The world's strongest man in the building, I'm built so stoutly. Ultimate troll, especially when they think I'm retired. Live for the thrill of the fight, now I'm really inspired. Huh? And don't you ignore me, I author the story. These blood, sweat, and tears that I Shed, get carefully gory, a big fight feel indeed. But I know it's not a drill. Get a load of my expertise, please. It's smooth skill. Heavy weighted, y'all overrated. Look how I made it. I'm the most creative and innovative. Y'all way too dated. I'm anticipating your every move. I'm out here waiting. All these bodies on the canvas. Picasso, I'm out here painting. 50 cent for your thoughts, player. You better back down. Make a name off of me. I'll make you famous on SmackDown. Used to be that silver back. Your attitude ain't feeling that. My title on the line. I'm way too raw. And now I'm real and black. A mismatch. This dude whack. And he exposed Think you know about this hurt business You been closed The bone breaking Dress shaking Phenomenon Keep your vitamins And your prayers Don't need your pythons Test to the wits And I'm infinitely strong Send them to the back of the line Where he really belong From a friend to a foe Either way you still the enemy World strong get slam Let's call it Mark Henry Highlight Once again, another highlight real freestyle for those of you listening to the audio format. But yo, man, that was a nice little break to kind of give us time to to stretch our legs. Well, me stretch my legs because I've been sitting down all damn day. Come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, That's man, it. we're definitely uh, incorporating that more. Basically, a brief break to kind of give us a brief reflow. But yo, this week in wrestling, uh, we're going. It's going to be brief because we got more preview and predictions on it, more so than reviews. So hopefully you guys uh yeah, go to one say I know I low key need a J U soak one. Hey we keep working it on that for you, homie. Keep it locked. Lock. Keep it locked. We, 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 we working on it. We, like we 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 have this way where we're we're definitely gonna freestyle a lot more yeah. uh stuff, but we're just working on it. But yeah, that I definitely pitched that. So keep it locked on that, keep it and keep it pretty much keep it locked in here Dang. all right i don't know why i just did that all right uh <laughs> nxt we can, we can talk about nxt that we just watched like two hours ago it was pre-taped this week so we're pretty much not going to give you a full breakdown this week we're just going to talk a little highlights here and there uh so they started off with uh Obafemi defending the retaining the nxt champion nxt north american championship against uh lexus king let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and just just be honest did you did you peep that or did you fall asleep on it? You know what? I I missed it. To be honest, I missed that part. Um, I tuned in to the show, but I missed that part. It was a squash match, brother. It was squash. <laughs> yeah, I kind of yeah. peeped that when I went on. Um, because while the show was on, I didn't even realize that that match had happened because it was like eight oh eight when I tuned in. Mm-hmm. So like, I was like, and I was just having to see on the Instagram for WWE, and I was like. Obafemi retains. To, I'm like, what the hell? It's like, <laughs> when did he? I'm like, oh well. Yeah, they kicked off with it because they closed with the women's championship match. Yeah. Uh, so I was I like, mean, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say was, bye, Lexus. That says all I needed to know. That Obafemi destroyed your career. It was a. It was pretty much like he got some offense in. I give him that. But like I told uh, Cindo, I was like, I'm not. I don't hate Brian Pillman Jr. or Alexis King. I'm just not into the character. He's a clout chaser. I just don't care. Yeah, apparently they're saying he's basically what his dad literally was, a pot stirrer. Because they oh, said they did this. Well, yeah, because that's apparently his dad. Like, he's doing the exact same thing his dad was doing, despite the fact that he's trying to separate himself from that. Mm-hmm. Even though he may not be named Brian Pillman Jr. in terms of team. Name, yeah. name yeah. 
They said if you go back and watch Brian Pillman Jr. in his time in WWE, this same character is exactly what he was. Not as flashy, but in terms of like stirring the pot, instigating and 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 doing stuff. That's exactly what his dad was doing. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's like I mean, and that's, well and that's why I told and that's why I told CC I was like, yo, if they give me a reason to care, mm-hmm. I will. If they don't, would you care if he pulls up with a with a with a forty five millimeter? Probably not. A I, got one, I got one right behind me. <laughs> People pulling up with guns don't phase me because I'm like I I I, I live in a, I, I'm in a military family. Mm-hmm. My brother got probably my my brother likely has more weapons than I do. True. That doesn't phase me. Oh my god, it's it's a gun on TV. Yeah, I watch Equalizer and all these other TV shows and movies. True. Hey man, they won't well, face me. They will have to do something, but it's just like I'm not against it. So like he probably will do something that'll just pop me. But for now, nah, I'm not moved. Fair. I'm right there with you, brother. I... Right, let's, see, let's see what else. Cause we literally going through highlights. Um, they're t- so Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin, the Wolf Dogs, celebrated winning the NXT Tag Team Titles. Uh, so they're pretty much baby faces, right? That's what. It oh, they're gets. still heels. They're still heels. <laughs> they're still. They're, they're pretty much assholes. Okay, they're 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 getting baby face reaction darn near. So it just gives a baby face vibe, even with that. But hey, that's cool. Yeah, they're so they're basically setting up pretty much them because Braun Breaker is on SmackDown now. He's he signed with SmackDown, so mm-hmm. he's literally getting called up to SmackDown. But for now, he's he's going to finish up NXT. Um. And they're pretty much setting it up to where they're going to be like this is pretty much they're setting up Chase U, Axiom, mm-hmm. and Razor. And there's another team I am missing. I like I'm missing a team. No, I think that was it. That was it? Okay. Yeah, that was it. It was it. I will say this though. Does it not feel weird? Like Go back to Solo and the fact of when he won that North American title. Get all bid. I know that it was like a, a unexpected pop up, but the fact that they had the man defended on SmackDown to surrender the title because he was called up in the bloodline and all you that. About Solo? Yeah, but then you had Dominic in Judgment Day, who's not a part of NXT at all get a title match, win the title, defend it basically between main roster and this. Uh, Dragon Lee, same case, when he won it from him. I feel like now they did that. Just... signed right. to SmackDown officially. It's known. And yet, he, I'm surprised Michaels or Ava has not been like, yeah, I hate to ruin this moment, but I kind of got to strip you of those titles because technically, Braun, you're not a part of this brand anymore. Yeah, know. you know what I'm saying. Try to make this make sense, please. The consi- you, oh, you're asking for consistency, is what? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just want consistency because I'm like, if that's the case, Solo shouldn't have never stripped that dog on North American title to begin with. He should have still had the dang gum thing when all of the bloodline was champion. I'm just saying, it would have kept the aura great because he would have been North American champ. His brothers were the tag team champs. Roman had both the belts. It was, it was, it. it Fit. It felt right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He had Sammy as the fanboy. Yeah. yeah. And then same thing with the Judgment Day. You saw they they let that ride. All of them had the gold. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They let that ride. Technically, they all still have the gold. It's just now Dominic doesn't. But still, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, bro. That's just me. A little slight. Oh, no, thing, that, you, no. your, 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 your annoyance makes sense because that's one thing that I feel like NXT needs to be consistent with like mm-hmm. okay let's let's get this let's get the ball rolling so i get that so we'll mm-hmm. see what they do i they, i see them either losing the titles at either roadblock mm-hmm. or stand and deliver okay i could see that who do they lose it to apparently they <sighs> setting up uh they're setting up the oc <laughs> yeah. they, they remember they're on the roster now Oh, the Kevin Nashers. Oh, no. Okay. 
I guess it gives them something to do. Sure, why not? <laughs> make finally make you your money without stealing it. So that works. Earn your keep, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll see where they go with that. Did you peep that uh Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen match? I did. Um, it was a low budget, uh, it was good for what it was, but it was like a low budget mellow and trick Williams kind of thing. Not on the big scale because they uh I believe they uh, what you call it? Then they um because they uh they didn't have a fallout as big as this one. Right, you know, and, and you know, Briggs is JBL light light at this point. I mean, you're doing clothesline from hells, like you're you're literally mimicking him without the character, bro. And I, I, I need you to I like that you're tributing it and all that. You adopted it, but bro, you, you, we gotta if, if this is really something they're pushing, I need some more personality, my guy. Like you, you're right there with Lexus King, in my opinion. Oh, I ain't sure. sold on you, dog. I'm just not. So please give me a reason to care. Speaking of them trying to give us a reason to care, what do you think of what they're doing with uh, Roxanne Perez? I like it, in the words of Booker T, when it comes to a Trick Williams entrance. I like it. Oh, yeah, I, man. <laughs> um, I'm 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 here for a Hill Roxy man. It makes her it, it, the way it, she's it. cutting these promos is giving in title. So of course, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's what mm-hmm. I said. That's what I said on on uh, on Sandals, uh show. I was like, this is uh giving me like she her voice. It's the voice. Mm-hmm. It's like she's like, oh my god, they beat me for the title. They didn't beat me for the title. I, this is why is everybody getting a title shot before me? Blah. blah. I'm like, yeah, you 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 are giving the entitled. Looney Tune it's, gimmick. So. I blame Drew. I blame Drew. You see what you started, Drew? You see, <laughs> at this point, WWE needs to make an official player hater club, <laughs> WWE edition, and you need to take each and every one of these mofos. Take Roxanne, take Drew. Who who on Raw? No, oh, that's Drew on Raw. So who on SmackDown is 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 over here crying and complaining? At this point, you can just take one from every doggone brand and just and just make this player hate his club. And 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 they just hating on everybody that's getting title opportunities that they feel they should deserve. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you get screwed, you getting screwed. Oh, you get a title shot? Not today. Uh-uh. That's mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Call them the hater blockers. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. I need to see it, bro. I need a. I need. We need a WWE official. That need to be when you bring back the Slammy Award. Y'all need to have that as a category. Player (laughs) hater. The player hater of the year. Legit, bro. Legit. The player hater of the year. That's what we need. We need a player hater of the year category. What you think? What you think about what they're doing with uh, Lyra Valkyria and Tatum? I'm enjoying this character. What they're doing with Tatum. I am enjoying it too, but Shaw didn't turn me off after seeing that dog on thing where she's spitting that bottle because I'm like, oh heck no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, since I saw that, I can't look at this the same no more now, bro. I'm like, bro, you 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 didn't took this too far. Heck no. Yeah. I said, bro, I'm out. I said, I'm out, dog. <laughs> it's entertaining, but good God. How far can you go? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what you think about them improvising uh Shotzi getting injured? Um, well, yeah, that was that was a sudden surprise. Um, I think they did good for what they could with it. Shout um, out to Lash. Lash Legend for holding like she she held her own. Mm-hmm. She in did, my man. Opinion. I'm happy for her, man. I really want her to continue to just continue elevating, like we were saying, man, um, last week, uh, both on air and off air. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I really want to continually see her improvement because black women are winning a lot right now. No, for sure. A lot. You know what I'm saying? Like Jada Parker, Last Legend, Jakara Jackson. Yeah, Jada Parker on on what? She's uh, on... World star. star, like we haven't heard world star in years, and you popped up. They're like, damn, wrestling it done changed. Done changed. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so you're horny is what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever floats the boat, let Niggas it go. Niggas are horny. 
<laughs> whatever, whatever floats the boat, let it tote, baby. If that's what's setting the sails, let it go on the coast. That's all. Hey, man. Hey, man, I get it. Like, I, I said it on the show. Like, I tell people this all the time. Like, well, the thing about me, the way I consume wrestling, I know I can, I have eyes, okay? Mm-hmm. That's a fine ass woman. Legit. Her, Legit. Rizzo, JC Jane, like, I don't know where these women are coming from. I didn't know they existed until now. That's how fine they are. And they're in my age range. But me, as a wrestling fan, I know how to turn that shit off. For real, bro. For real. Like, you literally, like, I love Muscle Man Malcolm. Like, that's my that's my dog. He was like, Jay, he was like Jada Parker for NXT Women's Champion. I'm like, bro. She ain't ready for that big dog. She ain't, she ain't and ready. People, and people thought, people thought I was like, People started rallying. I'm like, bro, that's Malcolm. He he's joking. It's tw- it's just Twitter. Mm-hmm. He's he's satire, as y'all like to use. Mm-hmm. That shit was funny. I'm like, bro, like, I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand. I understand. She has it. Like I said on 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 seeing those show, she has it. I'll, I said, give him until next year. She'll be mm-hmm. way better than what she is now. If if the injury bug avoids them all year, because there's been an injury bug all through NXT all year. Poor Jay, Shotzi, uh, somebody else, Nikita. Nik- <laughs> yeah, H- Huggins. Like it's like at this point, like come on. But I'm just saying, like the injury bug is there. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like if everything goes well in them, like God willing on their side, they're good. To me, in my opinion, they're good for the next for the next year. So, and they'll they'll, they'll definitely improve because she has potential. Mm-hmm. She has a lot. And, and I agree, man. Um, we're gonna see, man. But it's shout out to her if you if you if you popping like that. I mean, that that's more of a reason for them to now push you. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, again, get you ready and get your reps in. But now to really truly push you to get those reps in now, so that more people catch on to that that because she has an it factor. There's just certain things that you have, even when the end ring isn't fully there yet. There's certain things you have that you cannot teach. Charisma is one of them, and a certain look is another. And she has it. Baby. That's it. <laughs> and she has it. Like MFB says, uh, give her time to get better and improve. She's going to be NXT Women's Champion soon. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, just give mm-hmm. her time. Because I believe Agreed. she just had an NXT title match on uh, at the live event. She had lost, obviously, but she just oh, had it. She? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, wow. they, they, that's the thing about the live events. They just pretty much throw you out there to see, like, okay, they give you the reps. So she had her reps mm-hmm. in. So they they uh-huh. hear they hear they hear the positive reaction. And I seeing as this episode was pre-taped, I see them basically giving her more to work with in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now Raw. Let's talk about Raw that went down. Uh it was go home to the chamber. What you think about did you, did you get any highlights? Did you watch it? Did you watch it or did you yeah, did you, I watched go to Raw. highlight Raw. Did you go to highlight Raw? No, no, I watched I watched Raw um in its fullness and um it was a solid show in terms of now we're starting to get what we actually want with mm-hmm. build up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh Raquel coming back was an interesting surprise I didn't expect. Given what she was going through, I was like, "Oh, so you're 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 good now." Okay. Um not going to lie, At, shout out to my co-host on Life's Botch, Ash Benny, because I know she posted a video, uh, not a video, but an image of we're getting closer to the elimination chamber that we want. And it basically is exactly this lineup minus one. And Raquel is not that one. And you <laughs> know where I was going, brother. I, I guess the dirt sheets or somebody must have assumed that we were going to get Miss Jade Cargill in this. Actually, somehow. WWE leaked it accidentally. They leaked it. They they released a graphic, like a blurred out graphic, and her, her silhouette was right there. Like a literally blurred out of her WWE render was on it. See, and that probably explains why they did this then, to cover that up, that little botch mistake. They probably wanted to say, oh, yeah, 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 I thought we were going to get you Jade. No, 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 we're giving you Raquel. She's back now. Look, hey, Raquel, you're in there. And I bet everybody was just like, oh, you know, like, right. happy to see her, yes. But I'm talking online-wise, everybody's probably like, oh, what a like, like, really? Yeah. That's what we're doing? The back is back. 
the back <laughs> is back. She a new gimmick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do it no more. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, I can't do the smile and, and, and the flexing of the back, man. Like, like she's pretty as all get out. I'm just saying, like, bro, stop smiling. Please. Stop showing your back. Stop smiling. I was hoping this time away would have, if, you know, when you did come back, I was thinking, matter of fact, before even seeing her, when I found out she came back, I'm thinking, oh, that's what's up. She's back. Does this mean she has a new look and a new gimmick? Nope. As soon as I look back at it, saw the same old thing. Came out smiling. Happy to be here. Tuck around, flex that back. I said, oh, here we go. She's like, <clears throat> I'm like, all right. Okay, dude. Okay. I need that NXT version of you back where you just were not smiling and you were basically. You just showed up, whooped people's ass, and left. Mm hmm. Pretty much. That back, though, next world star clip. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. Up. World Star, yeah, World Star gonna be going through looking at all these women like, hey, who this Bianca girl? Oh shoot! Hey, who this? Oh, dang, Jay Cargill. Hold on. Oh, Tiffany. Oh my God! They gonna be boy. They gonna be all over. <laughs> I'm like, God dang. Yeah. Matter of fact, shout out to the Joe Button Podcast, bro, because. I even heard these fools over here talking about the ladies, bro. They was like, they was like, yeah, bro. I've been back on my wrestling. They like, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. Them women, the women are killing, bro. The women right. is killing. that Rhea Ripley, that that that, that, that Jade Cargill. Damn! <laughs> I said, oh, my nigga ain't even say Bianca. That boy said Rhea. I said, oh. To be fair, to be fair, I'm pretty sure he probably watched the Royal Rumble mm-hmm. and then watched Raw, and then that was it. It probably Bianca's on SmackDown, so that's the only reason why he probably because Bianca ain't, wasn't on Raw after the Rumble. True, true. It was just it was just SmackDown. I just love that Rhea has that effect on just about anybody. Oh yeah, oh people, oh Rhea, Rhea make you forget it's Black History Month. <laughs> yes, she does. Indeed, she does. She A lot of people it. in NXT make you forget. It's like, damn, it's, it is. Liv Morgan make you. Liv Morgan made me forget it was Black History Month. I'm like, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> well, 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 you, you know, you know. To be fair, to be fair, you know, Liz invited to the cookout all the time, nine times out of ten. She's invited to my cookout. I don't she's, care about y'all. Yeah, she invited my cookout too. She inv- yeah, know, she's I mean, invited I'm, my cookout. Like I don't give a damn. Like shit. She's invited. Like, to, she, she's invited to my cookout. Mm-hmm, exactly. You know, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. But to go yeah. backwards, with, but to go backwards with Raw, it looks like we're get finally getting the build to Jimmy versus Jay Uso. Yeah, man. Um, I didn't know we were gonna jump right into that one. Uh, yeah, I'm going back. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going back. Okay. Uh, well, shout out to all of y'all reacting to the meme that I uh, randomly posted in my head as I saw this entire thing fold, and I was just like, you know what? All due respect to Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. Let's see what this would sound like with Jr. and Jerry King Waller attached to it. <laughs> if we were the attitude era with this, and boy. <laughs> Uh, shout out to y'all on TikTok, boy. Y'all are blowing this thing up. I was like, oh my, and within a matter of minutes, I was like, okay, thank you, head, for uh, you know, pause if I say it that way, but thank you, head, mind, <laughs> for uh, <laughs> thank you, mind, for uh, allowing me to just randomly say, yeah, you know what, let's do this, but nah, man, it, it is about time we got this, but I still can't take Jimmy serious even in this moment because, bro, the way you rung that bell, first of all, like my nigga, it was like, okay, I get it, bro. I I stop. He cannot be serious for one goddamn second. Bruh. Like Jimmy, we're Bruh. trying to take you serious, but you're 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 making me laugh. Exactly. It's like, bro, chill out. That man ringing that thing like a dog on five year old trying to entertain himself. I'm like, my ninja, chill. He embraces inner Jim Johnson when he made JBL's theme music. Ding 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 ding
So yeah, shout out to him. He actually he was like, bro, Jimmy was out here making ding 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 ding. I actually sent it to you so you could uh, see what okay. I'm talking about. He okay. actually dubbed it and it synced with the with the bell. <laughs> oh man, bro, it's crazy how that all synced, bro. I didn't think Jr. and them was gonna sync that well. I just happened to I found someone was like, let's see what I can find that's gonna match this. I was like, Jr. going crazy, and they just happened to pull up Triple H when he was him and Austin. <laughs> and he a him. bitch. You why why why? <laughs> <laughs> damn you damn you to hell I was like damn Yo. you Triple H damn you you son of a bitch why 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 <laughs> somebody stop this somebody stop I said yo this is this is gold <laughs> And I did not think it was going to take off the way it did. I was just like, yo, thank you. Thank you. I got one. I got me one. Let's go. I like what they're going with this. I'm going to give them credit, though. I like what they're going with this. Jimmy is like, I'm going to let him say it. I'm going to let him say it. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, oh, no matter how big, no matter how big you get, I'm always the big brother. Always. Nope. No matter how big you get, I'm always the big brother. Mm-hmm. Always. You know what? He's the hater. He's the hater you put in the hater of the year club. There you go. Put him. Drew McIntyre Drew out here McIntyre. praying on people's downfall. Mm-hmm. He's actually participating in people's <laughs> downfall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, he attacked Cody. He he helped with Cody Rose getting thumbed again by Soul Sako. Pause, and then he uh, screwed his brother out of the, out of the Intercontinental right. Title, which was a great match, by the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I give, like, I, 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 I give them that. This close. I need Jay to get a rematch because we were this this close, this close, bro. I hope. I still would not mind him taking this title off of Gunther. I'm not. And once he finishes with Jimmy, I would not mind him taking that title off Gunther now. My gripe with Jimmy, you couldn't help your brother win the title so you could take the title off of him? Exactly. You just, you that jealous? (laughs) Nah, for real. Because now now you're just basically facing him without a title. So you're saying that this, that you're, Brotherhood's bigger than the title, because you know that would have been a major moment, and then you could have interrupted that moment after. I, what? Okay, Jimmy. Hey, sure. Why not? Now watch him get a United States Championship match or something, and Jay and gonna cost him. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Jay gonna cost him the title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I like the the theories that a lot of people were putting online with it. It was like Jimmy's reasoning for attacking Jay was because he don't want him to become like Roman but he don't realize that in order for him to keep Jay from becoming like Roman he's becoming Roman because mm. if, you look, if you look into his eyes you can see the manipulation the hatred that's Roman hmm okay I like it I like it I rock with it yeah, yeah, no, that, that that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Meanwhile, Jay is carving his own path, mm-hmm. which Roman, as we if, if we're going that far back, then we'll go back to when we teased and talked about Cody and what's the story and how when him and Jay won those tag titles, what's the first thing we saw Roman do in that face to face tease they did mm-hmm. but directly at Cody, pissed off, jealous. This is my show. Because he did the one thing that he couldn't even do in his own family, Mm -hmm. which was bring those titles back. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, it's 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 the haters club, the player haters club, man. I'm telling you, (laughs) Jimmy Uso, Drew McIntyre, Roxanne Perez, you put these folks in a group and they are the player haters club. Them hating niggas. Mm-hmm. You, you just you just wait. I'm telling you. But I'm ready for them to run back uh, Jay versus um, Gunther at some point, or at least Jay winning the title eventually when he's done with Jimmy. But Jimmy, you hate that much that you couldn't even get your brother to win the title so that you can take it from him? Come on, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm interested to see... Uh, <laughs> I need to see how serious we're going to take Jimmy going forward in these next few weeks, man. I need to know. 
Oh yeah, for sure. So I need them. Honestly, I need them. Like they haven't given him an opportunity to show him on his own outside of that one-on-one match that he had. Then he have a match with John Cena. Mm-hmm. That was the only one-on-one match that I feel like he had where he showed a little bit where he was and people were shitting on it. But I feel like if they give him the opportunity, he might he might blow everybody away. Yeah, but this is literally going to be us going Jimmy versus Jay at WrestleMania. So we're finally getting there. Uh, Cody also definitely needs backup. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Before we get on there, did you peep <laughs> Pat McAfee? Yes, 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 that is. <laughs> that was the oh. Sh- He's like oh shit. Bruh. My fault. My fault, OG. <laughs> that is a moment <laughs> of the year. For sure, an LOL when we get to the oh LOL of the God. year. I bust out. I was like, bro, Pat literally looked like, oh, shit. My bad. Mm-hmm. My fault. My fault, dog. My fault. Like, yeah, yeah. My bad, dog. My bad. My bad. I didn't mean I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. That is hilarious, bro. Look, Cody definitely needs backup. He does. He, he, he definitely needs backup because this man is out here getting thumbed by Solo. Maybe it's pause, but maybe pause. It's, <laughs> pause. Maybe it's a good thing that that did happen again now. The deja vu, if you will, because mm-hmm. it's going to try to happen at Mania, and he's going to outsmart them. Hence, going back to our theories from That's what I said, yeah. And whether it's The Rock being the cause of it. Or whether it's like you said, previous people who've endured this, and it's like no more the Sami Zayn's, the Kevin Owens's, the anyone else you want to bring out that fought from L.A. Knight, everybody that fell victim. Randy to Orton, Randy Orton, <laughs> like literally all of these mofos are gonna come right out. AJ Styles, well, technically, my only it. thing would be is they do not touch Roman. I don't need them touching Roman this time. I need him to lose clean. Mm-hmm. You can bring these people out to even the odds, but mm-hmm. I need him. If he, if Roman is to lose, I don't need no caveat. I don't need no smidge or no little asterisk. I need a straight up clean. We don't been through enough of these in, outside interference with Roman. I need whoever beats him to beat him clean. But tell me this. We're this close to that doggone record being broken. Do we really Uh, want it to end right now? Hogan? Because at this point, it's like it's it's like someone said, it's like you're this close. It ain't gonna be replicated and done again. So if you're gonna do it, do it. But what did they what did that what does that lead to Cody? He well, can't afford this, to lose again. This unfortunately shows back to what you said when they had two titles on Roman to begin with. You could have finished this story last year if you would have just separated the dog on titles to begin with. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It needs to, I'm sorry. I, I love Roman. It gotta end. It gotta it gotta end. I my god, I I get it. I get it. If it it look, I'm not booking. If Roman retains the title, I'm I'm still gonna watch the show. Me too. Me too. If he doesn't lose it, if he loses loses the title, I'm still gonna watch the show. But I need for Roman to lose the title clean. He does not need to be touched. You can do to the emotional interference where the Rock plays emotional games and sets it up for next year, mm-hmm. and then Rock gets Roman gets his win back by then beating Rock. Or they, or they have Roman retain and then have Cody win at MSG or something. Just make it make sense. It's up to you to make it make sense. Do, oh my God, that's the thing. You see yeah. what y'all got me got me dealing with? Talk about booked into a freaking corner. Either way, something's got to finish. Meanwhile, this guy. Polka dot Seth. Yeah, I know. I know. Shut up. You don't need to tell me. 
<laughs> but you know, I can still be your backup. I told you to face me at WrestleMania. This would never have happened. This could have been us, but you planned. Mm-hmm. You wanted to finish the story. You could have finished the story with me. I would have. I would have been willing to go four and zero against you. I told you a million times, Seth. No, this is personal. I have to do this. But you were willing to give it away the first time. What changed your mind? I what beat you three mind? times already. I can, all due respect. I cannot beat you a fourth time. That makes that title already more second than it is. Yeah, you got a point there. All right, buddy. <laughs> uh, and that was commentary with highlight real and Gresh unleashed. <laughs> but let's talk about this right quick. Hold on now. Like, bro. Oh. I'm gonna need Cody to stop backing up. That's my, my first gripe. Every time he backs up, he gets Samoan spiked by solo. Mm-hmm. You did it at Mania last year, and you did it this. You did it on Raw, All right, bro? Stop backing up. Do the crossroads in the middle, because every time that happens, you and then Solo, bro. We gotta talk. <laughs> Why the hell you keep wearing a hoodie when yeah. we know it's your big ass? Yeah, my boy. And then he'd yeah. he be re- taking the hoodie off like it's a big revelation. Unless you are revealing to me a new hairstyle, <laughs> there's no revelation, brother. None. <laughs> Unless you're gonna reveal to me that you are dying your bleach, your bleach blonde hair red to represent mm-hmm. the bloodline, you're not revealing anything. We know it's you, my, my brother in Christ. We know it is you. We it can't was, miss you. It, it was all you are cool. not a small individual. We see you, we can see you. <sighs> it was all cool at Clash at the Castle, but now, brother, you didn't just wore that joke out. <laughs> that brother, brother, it ain't it, dog. It ain't it. I got a meme strictly for this. Hold on, like, let me pull this up. Like, oh, like, like I, dog, come on, now. come on, dog. Hold on, I got like we're not moving on until I get this meme. I'm about to download this meme right now. Like, we, we're not moving on. Like this, because this this yeah. this captures my 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 essence of this entire solo Sokoa thing to a T. I gotta pull it up now. That y'all gotta bear with me because I this is my thoughts on this entire ordeal because I'm I'm tired of this. I am tired of solo thinking like, bro, come on now. Like, no, nah, we're not we're not gonna keep we're not gonna keep doing this. We're, we're not we're not doing this. Now hold on, I'm gonna pull it up now. Like, I'm I'm tired I'm solo. I'm tired of you. I am tired. Of you, like, oh my god, bro. Hold on, shout out to our homie Cat Williams because he pictured me perfectly. Nigga, did you know that I can see you? Nigga, you right there. It's- <laughs> like, I see you so long. I Come see. On. You ain't John Cena, brother. I can see you. <laughs> you are right there. Oh my god. <sighs> but we talked about Raquel Rodriguez coming back. Like, we, we, there's not. I pretty much agree with everything you say right there. Like, there's nothing else mm-hmm. to add there. What you think about that that promo battle that they had with everybody coming out? They they cued everybody's music up. Next person talks. They cued oh, everybody's it's... music up. Next person talk. The same Dude. formula that we normally get from time to time, and I'm so sick of that. I'm like, bro, listen. <laughs> Can the person get a point across before they just decide to play the next person's music at least? Good God. It's almost like y'all are saying, okay, tell me, talk, wrap it up, wrap it up. All right, it, next it, person, felt, it felt like they was reading the fucking script. Mm-hmm. It's like, next person, please. Get my point across. Next. <laughs> get my point across. Next. <laughs> Next, and I'm like, <laughs> now you, you you're interrupting, girl. You're interrupting glow time. I said, wait, whoa, 
What is happening? I mean, why y'all doing Naomi like that anyway? Now do you see why I was telling you, Gresh, why I don't like this elimination chamber? Sure, on paper, it's cool. But you see, you're ruining a lot of moments here. Naomi just got back, and we're already doing this with, with promos, man. Shouldn't she have her own full promo? And Tiffany Stratton, man. Like, <sighs> they changed the theme music. And she was... <sighs> Mm-hmm. You can tell everybody was reading the script. Like I'm saying, I did not. I was not. I, I'm already excited for the match, but I was just not feeling this promo at all. And then you had Nia come out and attack everybody. <laughs> 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 just tell me that she's not winning the title on Saturday. <laughs> that literally yeah. just told me. I'm like, you're not winning that title on Saturday. Well, you know, it didn't help that Becky's over here just foreshadowing, making it even more obvious. Hence why, again, I'm, I can't be excited for this chamber as much as I want to be. Because I'm like, if this wasn't so obvious of where y'all were headed, I'd be excited. Because I'd be like, oh, yeah, Raquel. Oh, yeah, Bianca. The only thing that's got me sitting here saying, it's almost like the Royal Rumble was. But at least at the Royal Rumble, you kind of had a level of unpredictability somewhere. Like you knew Bailey because you wanted Bailey, and we got that. But you still easily said, "Man, any of these women could low key win it, right?" Like Jade, Bianca, Liv. Like it was like, okay, this is just straight up predictable because you know y'all been y'all teased it at the press conference. Y'all teased it when they did the face to face. Y'all teased it when they did the promo. And she's like, "I gotta prove, you know, because I think you're better than me, and I've gotta prove that wrong." And these things. Bruh, why y'all got to do that to these women? Half of them just got back. Half of them just came, you know, just debuted on the freaking main roster. Mm. And we're doing this. Now, I know, again, I was I was hearing you, Gresh, when you said at some point everybody's got to lose. Mm. It's not that I don't believe that. But why it got to be everybody that's got some different type of momentum all at once? That's my gripe with this Elimination Chamber, specifically with the women. Somewhat to the degree of the men's too, but that's a little different. Because the only gripe I have with that is it's clear cut y'all going Drew, but you got Randy Orton in here, and Randy Orton hasn't necessarily been pinned yet since he came back. So now you got me saying, okay, well, shoot. <laughs> Who's going to pin Randy Orton then? Is it Drew? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, yeah, and LA Knight's in this thing too, who, you know, got pinned, but, you know, he hasn't really lost, lost you know, since this momentous wave he's been on. So uh, I'm guessing a screw job. So Triple H, I just want to know how exactly you're going to book. I think that's the reason why I'm going to watch Saturday because I want to see how they're going to book that. And we're going to definitely talk about it briefly when we get to our predictions of it Mm -hmm. uh, before we get up out of here. But uh, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a lot of questionable decisions. Uh, Last thing before we switch over to our funny moment of Raw, uh, Mm -hmm. they're cooking something with Chad Gable. They are. Now, to you people over there saying he should be the one to beat Gunther, I don't think that's the case, but I do like the idea of what you're building this man up to. I just think that window has closed. Because he lost twice? Yeah, I think, and, and it's been so long since that time, I just think that window is closed. But with what you're building in your mid card right now, I do like that, and I'm I'm all for it. Ivar included, because even in that losing effort, it was like, bro, been booked real strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to mention your, you know, big Bronson Reeds. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's like the mid card shaping up real nicely in, in Raw and in SmackDown. And I say, what about Sami Zayn? Because you know they're teasing his involvement too. Like, do you think they're gonna build to be him honest, up to I think no. I think he wins the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay. My theory is that when Drew inevitably beats Seth, because he has to at this point. If he don't, I never want to hear Drew's name again. If that's the case, because he's already beaten you multiple times, so you have to do it this time around if they're gonna face at WrestleMania, right? By default. Mm-hmm. But I can see a scenario where Sami Zayn gets built up to be the guy to take it from Drew. 
And dare I say, maybe CM Punk plays a little bit of a hair in that. Maybe. Seeing as he's traveling around for these shows, even while injured. So exactly. he, can make, he can make Mania and, and basically play a, a factor of Drew losing. So mm-hmm. so you think they set up with Triple Threat with that? They could. I mean, I was thinking more in a one-on-one sense. Like, I think Drew will get his Mania moment back that he, mm-hmm. in front of fans, like this will be his moment to get that moment back. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it'll be necessarily a long run. It'll be more so like, yeah, you got the title. And because seeing Sami Zayn the way he's he's been IC champ. He's been tag um, team champ. Tag champ. Uh, yeah, he, I think time. US I think he's been US champ too, I think. Mm-hmm. But no? Okay, so it's just IC. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's been IC champ. I don't think that's what he's gunning for. When he says I'm gonna be champion, he, he talked about that world title. That world title. Yeah, and like that that gives me a vibe of he will win it. It's just a matter of when, when they're going to st- 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 you know build it up and how they're going to do it. But I feel like when Drew wins that title, Sami Zayn's the guy that's going to beat him for it, especially cuz it makes sense given that he still has unfinished business with Drew. Okay. So, it makes sense for him to take that off of Drew. And that could play in the factor of the bloodline screw step out of the world title. True, and he can play into night two. That is so true. That is so true, bro. I like that. I like that a lot. And um, Liv Morgan's the same way. And what I say with it's something about these revenges, they're telling these stories correctly. And Liv mm-hmm. made her point too, which is again why I'm, I'm intrigued at what and how exactly you guys are gonna book this because Liv made it very clear. I was the last person. I didn't even think about that. I was the mm-hmm. last person to beat Rio. I said, hmm. Now you got me thinking my theory about her beating Becky Lynch at Mania. Mm-hmm. I, that, yeah, like, that now like, tells me. As like a a shout, out to D, shout out to D from 313. That's what he basically said. He's like, Rhea needs to beat Becky. Yeah. yeah Becky, Becky I yeah. But I, feel, I see Rhea going in and out the same way. And mm-hmm. then they do the revenge with Liv. After mm-hmm. Mania, like yeah. WrestleMania, oh, I mean, not, I'm about to say WrestleMania they could, backlash, uh, backlash. And they could even do it. Um, honestly, if if you do this right enough, you could even hold it off until SummerSlam. Really, yeah, if they want to. I mean, they're doing a lot of international stadium shows. Like a lot of these B shows feel like big deals now. They, they do. Can, they do. So they can do it at Backlash or SummerSlam, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm cool with that. Me too. Uh, the last thing before we move on from Raw, before we go switch to our predictions and get up out of here. Did you peep this? Everybody loves our truth Except me. Oh, no! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Why would you not want our truth in your group? <laughs> Damien broke my heart. I haven't cried this much since the finale of This Is Us. <laughs> Remember when the ducks left Tony Soprano? Huh? Damien was my duck. Huh? Listen, I, I really appreciate your vulnerability and, and being so <laughs> candid. I just have one more question for you. It's obvious that your loyalty in this relationship was genuine. <laughs> but after everything that you've been through with this, will you ever be able to let anyone in? Again? You know, Jackie, this must be how genuine I felt what? when he wrote Pony. <laughs> <laughs> I got new friends. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, Cerebral Assassin, Triple H. We're going to show judgment day. You can't bully people. You can't silence nobody. You cannot keep Nick Mysterio locked away with no access to Facebook. Huh? We're gonna show them that tonight. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Truth, I love you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you the homie, bro. <laughs> ne- never change our truth, man. N- n- never, n- never. <laughs> I want to use that as a clip from now on. This must be how genuine I felt when you wrote, <laughs> wrote Lil Pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, shoot. Oh, this man got me slumped, bro. Oh, oh dog. If you honestly, I'm at that point. I just had to close out with that that clip with Raw. Like, if you don't like our truth at this point, this shit is fun. If they if they put the tag titles on Truth and Miz, I'm cool with that. I think they will because I'm, I'm I'm I was kind of upset that they had him take the fall in a multi man match. I was hoping they were gonna find a way to make, they kind of found a way to make him look strong because he tried to Champa tried to save it, but it took like two three of Judgment Day to hold him. Right, that's what I was saying. Like protect him, right? You know, I thought for sure. Like, why do you have to take the pin? And they teased us, but I think they're trying to save that big pop for the WrestleMania pop. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's probably why they went ahead and said. And the crowd is behind them. Like everybody's like, we want true, 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 true. So, bro, that is Mm -hmm. literally his WrestleMania moment. Mm -hmm. That I am here for. But I had to close out the raw portion for that because I'm like, bro, this is (sighs) man. That was yeah, like I was not expecting to laugh that hard mm-hmm. in a long time. Like every time I see our truth, I literally just hit that man with the <laughs> my <high> nigga. <laughs> I'd be like, my nigga. That is it's, it's the fact that this man's in California with a poncho and it's not even raining. It was just they like, said it was raining earlier that day, but it was bre- it was like a drizzle. It wasn't <laughs> even a full rain. It was just a drizzle. <laughs> oh, man, this dude. What can't oh. he do? What can't he do, bro? Oh, man, my God. Man, man. Uh, do you want to preview what they're doing to AEW real quick before we get to our predictions? Sure. Why not? Why not? Why not? Okay, so I'm I'm pulling up the graphics now, but I feel like they're they're literally doing it. Oh, before we move on, uh, shout out to Jay Malachi, uh, Javon uh, Evans mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. NXT Level Up. He cooked mm-hmm. over there. Make sure you guys mm-hmm. check that out. Um, also, we didn't really give our thoughts on the Carmelo Hayes NXT. We forgot about that, but yo, check like I'm I'm loving what they're doing with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was nice. That was nice. Taking so, it back to the roots. <laughs> with the barbershop and all that stuff. But uh for Dynamite tomorrow, they're doing uh Deanna Perrazzo is in action on uh, that can't too a jobber? Probably. Oh Lord. All right. Uh Tony Storm is gonna be in action, so you know it's gonna be against a jobber. Uh FTR Insert my people here. <laughs> right. FTR versus uh the BCC's John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. And then uh, can they coexist? Six man trios match. Uh, AEW World Champion Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, and Brian Cage versus FTW Champion Hook, Hangman Adam Page, and RVD. What? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> Just don't even. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nick. Ne- Man. <laughs> Man. <sighs> uh, and the words of Kendrick Perkins carry on. Carry uh they uh, collision was preempted because of NBA All Stars, but we're getting this match between Brian Danielson and a key, is it a key a key a key Akiyama. Akiyama. I probably mm-hmm. butched that like all here, but that's how, <laughs> that's happening this uh, Saturday. Uh, they added this match last week. Uh, it'll be Will Ospreay versus Konosuke Takeshita. So it'll be it'll be a, a Don Callis family civil war for revolution. Wait, and what? Why? Because of reasons. Um. Okay. And mainly because Jericho is going away for, on um, on tour, so they got to pivot a little bit. So I'm cool with that. Uh, sure and they, 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 to stay away, <laughs> right? And then they, now they got AEW's EVPs, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus Darby Allen and Sting for the tag team titles. Oh, goody! And a tornado tag match. So this will be Sting's last match. That's what he. That's what he want. We'll give him all that. <laughs> Nothing really much I, I want to talk about with AEW this week. It was it was a decent week. Um, I'm going to tell you what they're going to do on Dynamite. And we can go from there. What you, you know got? I just realized? What's that? Revolution's what? 
March 3rd, right? Mm-hmm. Negro, they coming to Duluth on the 6th and the 5th. So that basically just means that we just the last stop for steam to basically say bye in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Why the hell we couldn't be before the revolution so you can see him wrestle one last time in Atlanta? Man, y'all just so. I mean, he was. Then they come to Georgia. They came to Savannah. So, I guess. But they want to come to Duluth all of a sudden after the fact, which means I guess it's gonna be like a. Farewell, farewell. Mm-hmm. His last hurrah before he just say, "Yep, I'm out." Yeah, like he probably won't, he's not gonna wrestle because we know that's his last match. So this will just be the farewell of, "Oh, thank you for everything you gave us, Sting, and da 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 da." And here, Atlanta, make some noise, and we'll be like, "Uh, yeah, thanks, motherfucker," because you didn't <laughs> get to let us see him wrestle here in this farewell tour. But get it, yeah. it is. <laughs> Uh, hopefully this week, time to all be all elite. We ain't really got too much to be excited about. Like nothing bad, but it's like nothing that stands out. It was a decent week for AEW. Mm-hmm. All right, before we get up out of here, we're gonna do speed round preview and predictions for Elimination Chamber and TNA No Surrender. That's gonna be, No Surrender is gonna go down this Friday. I'm gonna watch both. Highlight will have to watch uh, just No Surrender. So yeah. Well, I watch Elimination Chamber. No, Elimination Chamber is Saturday. I'm talking about like SmackDown. Oh, for Friday. For Friday. For okay. Friday. Um, they're at the same time, right? Mm-hmm. Eight o'clock. All right. I'm probably. I'll probably watch No Surrender because we know SmackDown is taped anyway, so it's you know how that goes. I'm talking about you know I'm a I'm a literally do uh basically my thoughts. Okay. While SmackDown is yeah. going on, but I'm a, I'm gonna still watch both. For sure, so, for sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's go ahead and start off with the t- undisputed tag team championship match: the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate for the tag team titles. Who you got? I just want to say that it's funny how there's been no build up to this. By the way, I'm assuming on this tape SmackDown they confront each other. Probably, <laughs> but uh, I mean the build to it was basically them becoming number one contenders, and that's about it. And they yeah. had a they had a brief exchange with Dom and um Dominic last week, and they're going to have Dom versus uh Dom and Big Ass Head uh, JD versus Pete and Tyler, and of that's course. probably going to be their first encounter. The warm ups. <laughs> uh, I, I'll uh yeah, give me obviously Judgment Day to retain. Okay, so yeah, I I'll, I'll, I'll go that route too. I see Judgment. It, it'll be a a great match, but. I definitely see Judgment Day retaining. Uh, next up, we have... Well, this ain't even a match, but the Grayson Waller effect. Again? With Cody Rose and Seth Rollins. They just want this dude to basically be in his home state. Home oh, oh, country? Pretty much. Okay. Nobody's getting traded this time, I can tell you that much. Oh, boy. All right, well... What can we predict about it? <laughs> a celebrity coming and beating him up? That's all I can really say. That's what happened the last time he did a Grayson Waller effect at a dog on uh overseas show. <clears throat> this is true. Oh uh, uh, shit. Damn. He gets curb stomped. <laughs> yeah, probably. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. MFB said the rock showing up, the rock is not going. Yeah, no, he ain't gonna be it. No, He'll probably he send somebody on his behalf. Like they tried to on Raw, they tried to say uh Roman Reigns gave them gave Grayson Waller instructions on what to say during the Grayson Waller effect. So if they don't do anything on SmackDown to hint that they're gonna be on on only the mission chamber, he ain't showing mm-hmm. up. Like at all. This will probably be some type of thing where Grayson Waller try to attack them and they'll probably He'll probably they'll probably get booed though because Grayson Waller's from Australia, but Grayson is so good at making crowds hate him, they'll still cheer him. Yeah, of course, of course. So there's that. Uh next up we have the first of two elimination chamber matches for the women. We have Becky Lynch versus Naomi versus Bianca Belair versus Tiffany Stratton versus Raquel Rodriguez versus Liv. Morgan, where the winner become the number one contender for the women's world championship. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and just say I'm Becky Lynch. 
Yep. Becky Lynch. Unfortunately. Like you said, you had, you had a gripe with this. Like, what's your thoughts on it? It's just, you know, um, I don't I look at it this way, right? Like, because of how predictable and obvious this outcome is, you might as well have had the opposite of every qualification match turn out. Me and him should have beaten Bianca. Uh Zelina should have beaten Tiffany Stratton. Because it's like all these women are going to take L's anyway. So you might as well have had the women that they fought beat them to all lose to Becky if that was the case. But I get it. This makes Becky look, I guess, a little stronger because of the competition side of things. But it just – they've made it too obvious, right? And, mm-hmm. and, like, again, Liv just got back. She hasn't had many matches since just getting back. Raquel also just got back. So it's like, okay, well, you get back and win a battle royal, and then now you got to lose. Okay. A last it, chance battle royal where she didn't even compete in an initial exactly. qualifying match. So how is it a last chance? This is her first chance. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Naomi. Again, just got back, bro. You gave her new music, gave her an entrance. Like, only had that one match. Hasn't even had a real promo yet to signify some things. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell her mission statement that she was kind of telling before getting interrupted by the quick little promos and entrance, promo and entrance, right? Uh, I can understand Bianca. She's the only one I can mm-hmm. see that could kind of take a loss because – she's in that desperate mode of, look, I got to get to WrestleMania because I got a streak to protect. So her losing doesn't come off bad because in this role, she'll find her way to WrestleMania still. It just won't be in the way she normally expects. And then there's Tiffany, the new kid on the block. Why would she lose this quickly if you're building her up? She just literally got – Bianca literally called her out on like, you ain't even been here a full two weeks yet. You barely go here. <laughs> so it's like, that's my gripe, man. It's just like too many, quote, unquote, strong people that unfortunately have to take a loss for this person in the middle to go for a mania spot that she technically doesn't even really need, to be honest. True. Sure. But I, I mean I get it, man. Uh do what you gotta do. Y'all want this match so bad. Becky and Rhea. Let's just have them face so Rhea can beat her and we can move on. Next up for the men, we have Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre versus United States champion Logan Paul versus LA Knight. Yeah. Versus Bobby Lashley, the almighty Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens, where the winner becomes the number one contender for Raw's World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just say, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. This one would be tough. The only one that will, in my opinion, make a little sense would be Drew. Mm-hmm. But like you said, you kind of got me second guessing because you said Randy Orton hasn't been pinned. I can see it getting being them being the, the final two. Mm-hmm. They did do that face off where it was like, oh, so we're 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 gonna do this again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, momentum wise, Drew has the momentum because of his hater of the year antics. Mm-hmm. Yet, and Randy's kind of cooled off because they haven't done much with Randy since. It's like that fatal four way kind of hurt him. Even though he didn't lose it, he didn't win it, but he didn't get pinned. And Randy's kind of just been there right now. I don't Mm -hmm. know what they're trying. Because, like, the Rock stuff has now overshadowed the fact that Randy is back, which also was overshadowed by CM Punk, by the way. So it's like, hey, guys, it's it's Randy. That's still Randy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you can't count the guy out. But, um it's almost like you have to say out of these, what do, what would you rather see? You don't want to see Logan Paul for Seth for the title. You saw that last year and you don't want a title involved for it. Um, 
that late night's an interesting case, but because of who, because of Logan being in the match and the, and the uh, projection of these two going out of that mania, it almost cancels each other out. Bobby, we don't know what the heck they're doing with Bobby. We still don't even know this man Stable's name. So, in Bobby's case, <laughs> I see some screw job coming with this doggone faction called the Final Testament, I guess, in some voodoo-like way. Mm-hmm. Kevin Owens is also intriguing because, yeah, he kind of sort of has unfinished business with Logan Paul, but also could sneak and win a little something. I wouldn't mind him and Seth running it back out of Mania, but does it make sense right now? Kind of hard to tell. Uh, he doesn't really have major plans, so it's possible. Uh, so really it comes down to Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre. And it still just seems stronger on Drew, so I guess I'm going to go Drew. Mm, okay, so you're going to go with Drew. Uh, you, you made a valid point. Like, I under, like a lot of these people are going to eventually lose. So, mm-hmm. but if I'm going based off of what the story that they're telling, I see it, Drew stealing it. So I'm... I'm, Ooh, I'm at, okay. Like, they're going... He's... he's Because he's, 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 he's basically going to become a hypocrite. Like, he complained about the Usos getting involved and mm-hmm. screw him out of the title. But then on Monday, the Sol- Solo and Jimmy got involved and he took the win. Mm. So I see them playing that into this factor with Drew cheating to win. Mm-hmm. I like so that. that's my prediction for that. Okay. I'm with it. And last but certainly not least, which will likely be the main event, Rhea Ripley. Defending the women's world championship against hmm. Nia Jax. Oh, I'm gonna go with Re- I'm, like I'm gonna I'm let you explain a little bit before we give our prediction. Um, I see them. This is this is an obvious outcome, but I see them giving because I'm I'm gonna play devil devil's advocate, but I feel like Nia has been cooking mm-hmm. since returning to WWE. This may be controversial to some. I genuinely don't care. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, she's improved massively since her first run. Mm-hmm. It's because they've been they've mastered hiding her flaws. Mm-hmm. But after it's like if we go by the old cliche of like the raw go home, she not winning that title. She's still tall. Okay, that's fair. Well, what you get? So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and pick my pick. It's gonna be Rhea Ripley to retain, regardless, because they're not finna go all the way out of their way to tease Becky versus Rhea at WrestleMania kickoff, just to have her lose the title at Elimination Chamber in her home country. It'll be a decent match, but I still see have I still have Rhea winning. It. What about you? They're going to tease this heavily. They're gonna try so hard to throw us off. Like how we talked about, it's obvious Becky wins that chamber. I feel like they may try to throw us off in that too, but they're really going to try to throw us off here because the way, as you mentioned, how they booked Nia, they're going to make it where she's probably dominating the majority of this match, being that she's going to be the the heel. So she's going to do that heel work. And they may have some close falls where – Nia's like almost within a hair of winning, but um, yeah, Rhea pulls it off, gets that mega pop when she gets that rib tied up on Nia, and gets that grandiose moment in front of her hometown fans. Oh yeah, she'll be she'll be a god with that crowd. As soon as her theme music hit, as soon as you hear that, this is my brutality. It's mm-hmm. a wrap, and and it should be like super emotional, trying to hide it, but you'll see it. Um, and yeah, that's just going to be that moment, man. So no doubt, bro. Uh, yeah. Mommy for the win and, uh, off the mania we go. (laughs) Oh, for sure. For sure. So we both got Rhea retaining the title. Uh, for those of you who plan on watching it live, you can do so. I've actually got a screen grab of when it goes live, uh, for the, 
Australian Western Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 a.m. Central Standard Time, 4 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 a.m. And Hawaiian Standard Time, See, midnight. I wish I lived in Hawaii for that I moment. I can do. I can do midnight. <laughs> I can do midnight. I can. I can do two a.m. in Pacific time. Shout out to my people on the West Coast. That I can do. Sure, I might get tired around three, four, five a.m. But I could do it. But five a.m. for us really sucks. It really sucks. <laughs> and I- <laughs> that sucks. Ass. Jesus Christ! Oh man! Oh. And I and and I love it when they be like, oh oh oh, you you you, 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 you see how us international fans feel? You not you see how 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 how, 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 how we feel every single day? Uh, here is my thoughts on what you have to say to us. Shut up, bitch! Bitch, I will fuck you up. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have picked a more perfect clip given what we talked about earlier. So that was that was that was a one, my brother. Bravo! Shut up, bitch! Like, damn, five a.m. Five, dog. I'll probably see it because I'm gonna be up. But man, I'm gonna have to make sure I go to bed stupid early if I'm gonna get up to watch that, y'all. But I, well, I, I, luckily, I mean, but luckily for you guys, when we do our post show, it'll be at a decent time, three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. So that way it gives us time to process everything that we watched. Mm-hmm. So it'll still be Saturday. So we'll still do a post show talking about Elimination Chamber and No Surrender, but it will be at a later time. So, mm-hmm. and No Surrender will be more so highlights because it, it went down that Friday, but Elimination Chamber definitely we will get our thoughts on Saturday's show. And speaking of No Surrender, the TNA No Surrender, our preview and prediction before we get up out of here. For those of you who don't know, No Surrender goes down this Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe they're in New Orleans, aren't they? New Orleans, baby. Yes, sir. So it looked it's it looked like a solid match on paper. I know a lot of people are more so angry with what's going on with uh Scott Demore, but we can't punish the talents for mm-hmm. Anthem's decision. So we're gonna try to support where we can. Uh I guess seeing as I I'm I'm in and out with the with the storylines. I don't know too much, but we're gonna just speed through this so we get get you guys up out of here because we're not trying to hit that three hour mark ever again. Uh so for start off with we're gonna start off with PCO versus Khan. Okay, so based off what's been going on with Khan, he's been in a uh resurgence of sorts, and it looks like he's this new evil big time bad. Uh so Despite PCO's uh, very otherworldly uh, storyline, Undertaker like esque things, I'm going con for this one. Dope, dope, and I'm, I agree with you there. Like, uh, like they're, they, 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 what was it? The design that they they disbanded. Mm-hmm. So they obviously see something in him. So I see them giving the dub to Con. Will it be clean? We should. We'll we'll find out. Okay. Next up, we have Josh Alexander versus Simon Gotch. Now, this is interesting. Uh, ooh. I don't know I Simon Gotch. I bet you the fact that we got this picture up in our recommendations is going to, they're going to recommend uh, Simon Gotch shooting on Enzo. <laughs> oh, yeah. They definitely are. And with that being said, Give me Josh Alexander for this one because Josh Alexander did just kind of literally sign that new contract as of today. They were exercised uh, their extension. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, kind of gets that. We'll that see. Because I and and the funny thing is the story that they're telling with this is Simon Gotch's uh, reasoning is because he's a hater. Oh, so he's a part of the hater, the uh, player haters club. All right, yeah, cool. He's pretty much a hater, so. Uh, I like that. I like what they're telling. It's simple, straight to the point. But I don't see Simon Gotch winning, so I'm gonna go ahead and give me Josh Alexander. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we have Chris Saban defending the TNA X Division Championship against the debuting Mustafa Ali. Go ahead and give me Ali. Let's go, Ali, getting his first championship since being out of the WWE. Let's go. Has he won a championship in WWE? I. Th- 
You know what? I don't think so. he might have won. I don't think he won the cruiserweight title. No, this literally he's never. Oh my god! Yeah, so give me Ali. Ali's getting something he deserves. <laughs> I just thought about that. He's never won. A- never. Nope. Was Not he a twenty four seven champion? Mm, I don't think so. I don't even think he got that, bro. And Tristan said, "What the hell did Simon Gotch come from? Got to come from another <laughs> <Netherlands, Netherlands. laughs> Dog, that's exactly where he came from. Cause I said the same thing. Well, I was like, bro, he still when wrestling. he attacked when he attacked. I was like, bro, you you still mm-hmm. you're still employed. It it was it was even more funny that his uh, former tag team partner, Mister Aiden English, uh, being on commentary, didn't exactly commentate in a way that was like, oh my god, I know him. It was more like, oh Simon Gotch. That's it's like." Oh damn! Know. I just pulled up Mustafa Ali's Wikipedia. He has not won a single championship in WWE. Oh my goodness! That is crazy. Wow. He's always contended, but he he always lost. Damn, wow. bro! Yeah, he Ali for X Division champ. Make it happen. Uh, next up, we have Jordan Grace defending her TNA Knockouts World Championship against the winner of the X Division. What was it? I mean, uh, the the X. What was the Ultimate X? Ultimate X. Yes. Kill Michelle Shaw. I see them having Jordan retain because she just had that momentum from the Royal Rumble appearance. I don't see her losing it that quick. Now that is an interesting thought, but I think I'm going to go with Giselle Shaw on this one. Okay. Um, because it doesn't necessarily kill Jordan's momentum. Yeah, gotcha. but I can see a situation where it's just it's like they're priming Giselle Shaw to finally like get over the hump because she just fired her entourage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like she's trying to shed off the dead weight and and really. So uh, I got Giselle Shaw to take this. Okay, okay. Next up, we have the final match in the best of three series for the TNA World Tag Team Championships. Both men are tied at one apiece. ABC, Chris Bay, and. His name is slipping my brain. Chris uh, Bay and Austin. Austin. Ace Austin. Ace Austin. Yeah. Ace Austin. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But Chris <laughs> Bay and Ace Austin, ABC versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. I see um, ABC retaining. How about you? Oh, this is tough to call, honestly, but ABC is over. And uh, it's almost like Grizzled Young Vets always seem to get the short end of the stick, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me the grizzled young vets, just to yeah, see, just, just to be just, different, just to, just to be different. Okay. Yeah, for the chase purposes, you know, because they're they're the hot baby faces, and the chase is always better than retaining. So give me grizzled young vets. Bet, bet, bet. Uh, on the countdown to no surrender, we will have the systems Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers with Alicia Edwards, Alicia Edwards, excuse me, versus Kushida and Kevin Knight. Hey, shout out to my guy, Kevin Knight, man. What's good? What's good? Uh, yeah. I'm going to give it to Kushida. I mean, um, Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers. They, they're building the system around TNA. Okay. Or okay. TNA around the system. I'm still not sold on the system just yet. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what, it, what it is or what it will take. But so far, I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely giving me the system. What about you? Uh, call me, call me a homer, uh, rooting for the homie always. I gotta go with my boy Kushida and Kevin Knight, man. Uh, it's a matter of time, man. It's a matter of time. And he's, he's, he's making that ascension and his boy Kushida's got his back. I got them. I mean, each, uh, Alicia Edwards does kind of make this a factor though. She mm-hmm. could be the reason that they win, but I'm, I'm still going with Kushida and Kevin Knight. Got you, got you. Uh, next match we have for the Knockouts World Tag Team Championship: The K versus MK Ultra. Uh, I see the K retaining. I do as well. Give me the K for the retaining. Gotcha. Uh, that is because it's like they just won them and they haven't had a title defense, so they might as well go ahead and for sure, for sure, do that. Uh, and then the main event we have. Moose representing the system, defending the TNA World Championship in a no-surrender rules match. For those of you who don't know the rules to the match, they're going to have 
someone represent in their corner mm -hmm. and the only way for the match to end is for their representatives to throw in the towel so there's no pin no submission no type of you don't win on your own you have to you have to make your opponent go through so much pain that that their representative throws in the towel for them and i'm gonna be honest with you i am not a fan of that mm -hmm. i don't know how to explain it i'm just not a fan of that but they may work they may make it work but if yeah. i had to I have to be honest with you i see them i see moose retain yeah gotta give it the moose man um it's I think they're building to him and Nick Nemeth where Nick Nemeth inevitably takes it off Moose. So for right now, Moose is not losing that title. And this nigga's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. Yo, you a trip, dog. That's the comment of the night. <laughs> Saliva spitting. <laughs> no, 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 no. We gotta start. We gotta start awarding the people in the super chat. Who gets the comment of the night? Fact. You got that's, the, that's the comment of the night for that. Like that, that is. I'm sorry, that's hilarious. That <laughs> we got to pin that too. That that, that shit's sure. hilarious. Sure. Move, move, because he's making fun of his his lisp. Mm -hmm. Move by saliva waterboarding. But yeah, man, we both see Moose retaining there, and that is our our preview and predictions for both No Surrender and. Elimination Chamber both goes down this weekend. We will be doing a post show on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that gives us time to process what we watch. We get some things going on outside, and then we'll, we'll hop right hit back here. Make sure you guys subscribe, youtube.com slash addisgress when we're on YouTube. Or you can listen to it on Twitch. Uh, join us on Twitch. You can join us on Twitter or X. You can join us on Facebook. Wherever we're streaming everywhere. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, before we get up out of here, though, this is a nice, another edition of the Gresham Leagues podcast. Before we get up out of here, our song of the week. We didn't give it to you on air last week because we ran out of time. But mm -hmm. this week, we timed everything perfectly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the song of the week is where both hosts pick a song of the week. And it will be posted on social media. And that's pretty much our vibe for the week. You got your song ready? I got mine. Yeah, brother. I think I got mine ready as well. I'm, uh, okay. Matter of fact, let me go through my screenshots because... You know how you are when you listen to stuff and you're like, man, this could be it, this could be it. But uh, I actually took a screenshot from one of them, so I'll do that. Bet, uh, bet. You going first, brother? You want to go first? Yeah, I'm going to go first while you pull that up. Uh, my my song of the week will be Hard Knock Life, the ghetto anthem by Jay-Z. That's my song of the week for this week. I, I, that's, I that's a bot for me. What okay. about you? I am going sensual seduction by my boy Snoop Dogg. You know, we were fresh out of that uh, Valentine's week. And uh, and then also it's just the fact that it grooves, man. I, I like that groove and and that mix of like retro with modern. You know what I'm saying? Somebody needs to sample that and actually kind of bring that back a little bit. But yeah, I like somebody. That. You mean you? Maybe we'll see, man. We'll mm -hmm. see what's up. You know, you know. But yo, man, yo, we, we once again appreciate you guys for joining us here for the Gresham Leagues podcast. Where can they find you on social media, my boy? Man, for sure, brother. Always appreciate every follow, every like, all comments, and all that good stuff. Appreciate y'all, my guy. Um, ooh, good song. I see you, Tristan. That's a real dope song, brother. Salute. Um, follow your boy at Highlight Life, H I L I T E Life. Uh, like my boy Gresh, I'm thinking about changing that pretty soon. Highlight Life gets very confusing with some of y'all out there who don't understand that's the slogan more so than the name. So I'm thinking about changing it to the actual name, Highlight Real, um, with the hashtag of Highlight Life down the line. So if y'all see me change it, I'll let y'all know. But in the meantime, all things Highlight Life. Um, you can follow us at Life's a Botch underscore OTS if you like the Life's a Botch uh, show. Uh, catch me on there. We always go uh, every episode of Post every Friday. And of course, we have the uh, independent spotlight that we post every Monday. Uh, so salute to everybody who's been on already. Ooh, shout out to y'all! Y'all, y'all killing the songs of the week. I see y'all out there, good ones. And I see, I see the pun behind that song. That mm -hmm. makes sense. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> but anyways, um, um, and of course, can't forget. Make sure you follow all things OTS Media Co. Um, shout out to our boy DJ, who you will be seeing literally talking about OTS and more. So make sure you catch this talking-ish episode with the man behind the platform I'm talking about behind my show, Life's a Botch, 
this man and his network is what makes my show possible. So make sure y'all follow OTS Media Co. on all social media outlets. If you like music, you like film and TV, you like fashion, all that good stuff, that's the man, the face behind the brand. He don't like to show his face much, but that's the man. I do not care, Derek. (laughs) Derek. As he would tell you, follow the brand before you follow him, as he's probably going to tell you on that interview. So nonetheless, OTS Media Co. on all things, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Once again, we appreciate you guys for rocking with us for another installment of the Gresham Lee's podcast. We are next week will be episode 60, 60 episodes of this, of this podcast. But yo, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe by visiting www.greshunleashed.com or wherever you get listen to your podcast or simply by following Gresh Unleashed everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I, I don't, we're not on TikTok. Um, as well as Gresh Unleashed Pod on YouTube. We're on the road to 300 subscribers over there. And guys, make sure you guys continue to show love uh, and so, so, to yours truly, at his Gresh on YouTube, on Twitter, excuse me, or at his Gresh on YouTube, as well as uh, Josh Gresh on RG everywhere else. Uh, other than that, I believe that is all we have. To, oh, make sure you guys check out the video that, that just dropped today, uh, the final What If video. Shout out to Steve OG for this thumbnail. That guy kills these thumbnails. Make sure you guys support him as much as possible because he is a hardworking man in the WWE games community. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we, we love, love and respect him because he is the homie. Uh, with that being said, you guys say stay back here in these streets. And like I said on Twitter, if you got haters out here in the world, that's none of your business. Bro. What you got? We close out. I meant to tell him. Speaking of that post with that thumbnail, should we tell them what we're cooking up after what we discussed earlier in our group chat? About what we're looking to do with 2K24. Oh, yeah. We're going to be collabing a lot more. Once once I get the five, once my boy... You got the five. No, I actually have to get the five. I have games for the five, but I have to get the five myself, bro. Yeah. So, we, so we're going to get the five. Some mm-hmm. of these invoices are going to be processed tomorrow, so I might get that this week uh, mm-hmm. to knock it out. Uh, we definitely going to get the five. We're going to be streaming a lot more. We're going to be doing a lot more uh, collabs. Myself, Highlight. And DJ, even if I got to drive to this man's house, but we're going to definitely get a lot of collabs mm-hmm. uh, up, and, up and running. Even if we got to do it on these on Restream, where we can, we don't have to travel. We just literally do it when I'm in town because that's my goal. It's like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be more involved in the content side of things more going forward mm-hmm. uh, and more collabing where we have fun. Like we, we, it may be a Saturday where all of us are off or a Tuesday It'll be at night. Like, it'll be at night. It won't be during the day because we have lives. Mm-hmm. It'll be just something for, for the homies to kick. And I believe that trio will be under Freeopedia. So that'll be cool. our, our group name. Let's go. So, uh, yo, make sure you guys keep it locked on all of our social media platforms. We're definitely going to be promoting that. So, like, like Golden wanted to say in Twitch, he was like, I, we, I missed the streams on Twitch. Hey, they're coming back. But we just got to make sure our schedule just synced. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else you want to pull before, before I sign off? Um, keep it locked for more wrestling freestyles. Uh, again, shout out to we played a retro one for y'all today. Uh, I guess I can reveal who we got next up. I guess, in a sense, let's just say five is my favorite number. Oh, yeah, man. Let's just say five is my favorite number. That's that's the best way to let y'all know who's next. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so. Wrestling freestyles are going. Make sure you uh, follow the Gresh Unleashed and Gresh Digital Media pages. You know what I'm saying? If you if you haven't already, you know what I'm saying? And uh, working on also posting the pre- previous ones on the uh, Mike Mayhem Music um, page as well. So for those of you who want to hear them on the Spotify's and all that, make sure you hit that QR code up there. Keep streaming Gresh Unleashed theme song. Keep streaming the talking ish theme song uh and every other theme song that is basically under mike mayhem music uh Mm -hmm. it's it's helping it's helping us both really honestly in our pockets you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day we appreciate y'all for the love support and the streams uh appreciate y'all for the like and the love and the comments and shares on the freestyles and we don't normally tag the talent so if y'all really rock with it make sure y'all tag the talent so they can see that stuff too yeah we try not to blow up their mentions like most of y'all do so yeah, we just yeah, we yeah. just post it and go. Like I didn't blow up Mercedes mentions with me tagging 
or po- or tagging her in that. And I try not to do that with Mark Henry and all this stuff. That the one we just saw. Yeah, facts, facts. Like we'd rather you guys do it because at the end of the day, seeing fans do it shows them like, okay, we need to check this out because they're, they're they're tagging us. This must be something to see. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. You never uh, know. You never know. So appreciate y'all, and that's really it, man. Before we just basically sign off this thing. All right. And with that being said, you guys make sure you stay safe out here in these streets, and remember. You do if someone has hate for you, like I said, I say this all the time. Like people's hatred for you is none of your concern. Live life while you're having fun, peace, and happiness. That's it. If it gets to the point where people are showing you their true colors, believe them and cut them loose. But with that being said, you gotta stay safe out here in these streets and remember to always eat, sleep, flex, and repeat. We out, y'all be breezy. Yeet. No yeet.